morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here and uh, attending this uh, free uh, webinar on the education laws of survival in the time of the pandemic. Uh, maraming salamat po. At uh, alam ko maraming available na lectures ngayon and webinars in uh, social media. And uh, uh, I hope I can add to not knowledge uh, for all of you and uh, to help us adjust and transition to the new normal. And this time I'll, I'll provide uh, you with some legal perspectives and, and and again, I hope it helps you and I hope you find it useful in resolving the many problems that we are facing now because of this pandemic. Okay, this, the problem that, uh, that we really want to solve and the question that, that really that we want to answer is that how can the school survive this pandemic? How can we survive? It is now a matter of survival. The schools are, and the education sector as a whole is uh, in the midst of a crisis. It is in the middle of a perfect storm. You see, prior to the, prior to the pandemic, the education sector was still reeling from the, uh, the results of the PISA, and uh, we all know what happened there. We are at the bottom in terms of proficiency. And also some adverse reviews on our on the competence of our grad, graduates, employability, the quality of our education, and uh, and and the and the planning and the, the the plans that we are putting in place not only in the private sector but also in the public sector. Are, are towards uh, towards quality, and uh, I, I I remember hearing in a lot of interviews the Secretary of Education saying that uh, that the that the country has already resolved substantially the problem on access, and that uh, it is moving towards focusing on quality. You know, that that uh, important uh, and critical pivot to quality from access, and uh, we thought really that we are on that stage already and that um, and that uh, uh, major education reform should should be now on the quality and yung access we thought that we have resolved that and when we when we speak of access prior to the pandemic we we talk about uh, capacity in our uh, our classrooms all right the addressing the the crowding in our public school system, all right. The um, availability of our resources, availability of classrooms and teachers and school buildings. But now you see, access in education has a different meaning now, and it's not it's not about uh, physical classrooms. It's not about face-to-face uh, -face learning. And now we have to go back and uh, and address all of this. That's why I'm saying we are in a perfect storm. And now we have to address both quality and access and uh, and uh, move into a different platform, move into flexible learning options. You know, prior to the pandemic, we view these flexible learning options as alternative, alternative uh, delivery modes only for those who are uh, who have disabilities, only those who cannot participate in formal uh, education. And uh, and also, uh, we uh, in some uh, some delivery modes like like online classes and online education delivery, it was more of a privilege for institutions to go into that. It is not for everyone. For example, in the uh, higher education, in with the the uh, the policies of the Commission on Higher Education, those who are uh, only at those who are level three, at least level three accreditation, they are the only ones who can uh, implement uh, online classes. And uh, there's a requirement on the on the on the number of programs that uh, should be online if you want to implement an online delivery of education. So it was a privilege, but now I think uh, we don't have a choice but to. Uh, 
to implement uh, these flexible learning options, not as a matter of privilege. And, um, and it has to be inclusive. It has to be implemented on a wider scale. Uh, so it, it's really, um, we're really in a very peculiar and challenging situation right now. All right, so how do we, how do we uh, survive the pandemic? First is you address, we have to address school opening. We have to address the school opening. And number two, we have to manage our labor issues in relation to, uh, to ECQ and the lockdown. Now, so yung dalawang issues lang muna na yon. Now, let's focus our resources. Let's focus our, um, our energy in resolving these two major issues. Uh, saka na yung mga iba, mga nitty-gritty. Saka na natin problemahin. Ito mo ng uh, dalawang issues na to. No? Because these are very urgent. Alright? Bakit ito yung dalawa na, na na binabanggit ko? Because school opening, if you are not ready to open the school year under the flexible learning options, walang mangyayari sa inyo. No? Walang mangyayari. And uh, if you don't uh, get back into action, get back into um, into operations, you, know, you you'll have to absorb all of the costs without uh, without the, the needed revenues coming in. You'll have to absorb the payroll. So the more it is delayed, the further the school opening is delayed, then the more it becomes very difficult uh, for for schools. All right. Now, so those two issues lang muna. Okay, lalo na yung uh, labor. We will go into that later on. Yun ang isang uh, mabigat na issue talaga ngayon. No? That uh, we really have to balance the uh, ability of our schools to absorb the payroll and the needs of our school personnel, but at the same time, thinking of the viability of our educational institutions. All right. Okay. Now, kung may mga tanong po kayo, may mga gusto kayong uh, itanong at uh, i-share, o habang nagdi-discuss ako, you can put it in the comments. And uh, kung mga tanong, I can I can answer that. I'll try to we will try to answer that uh, later on, no, at the end of the lecture. All right. There's a school lockdown. So how do we get in get back into action? We need to be flexible. No, yan ang ano ngayon. That is the um, operative word now for many schools. Flexibility. We need flexibility in our schools to be to be able to thrive and survive the pandemic. All right. So we have to be flexible. Flexible learning options. Yan ang uh, uh, mga trends ngayon. No? So we have to migrate to that. We have to transition to flexible learning options because there is no other way as I've said uh, earlier. So what are the flexible learning, uh, learning options available? Open distance learning, online delivery, e-learning, so yung uh, asynchronous uh, asynchronous modes or modalities all right a synchronous uh, mode of uh, of delivery ibig sabihin yung uh, hindi kailangan yung mga estudyante learning all at the same time so they can work at their own pace they just need the learning materials so, for example getting a usb getting uh, getting the uh, um, materials from the school or delivered to them but they work at their own time yun ibig sabihin ng asynchronous as opposed to asynchronous where everybody still uh, work on a synchronized uh, pace uh, um, watching uh, the lecture uh, from uh, from uh, from from zoom for example uh, from skype pero they do it all at the same time so those are the available options and of course meron pa rin tayong residential i don't think the residential or face to face learning will be completely phased, uh, phased out. No? Meron pa rin yan. Uh, so it, it will be blended. It can be blended with the other 
flexible learning options, but definitely we can't do away with uh, with face to face. I always uh, say, you know, prior to the pandemic, there's still no substitute to face to face learning. Oh, imagine that, no? and then suddenly now we'll have to substitute everything with the uh, with the uh, flexible learning options and we're trying to do away with face-to-face. -face. Also, you have flexible, you have flipped uh, classrooms, you have synchronous uh, and other synchronous modalities. Okay, now, uh, of course, uh, we have to consider um, the health protocols and and uh, uh, the guidelines of the Department of uh, Health and uh, the, wealth, uh, the, the World Health Organization uh, as regards uh, health protocol. So that remains to be the top priority. And all other concerns take a back seat, including education. So we have no choice, but uh, as I always say, education should not stop, learning should not stop. There should be continuity of learning for the students. There should be a continuity and survival of the educational institutions. And um, we don't have much of a choice. We really have to go into the flexible learning options. And if you want to go back to face-to-face -to -face learning, you'll have to wait for the vaccine to come. And um, if you're waiting for the vaccine, I think then you'll have to, to uh, wait for a while before you open your schools because I don't think it's happening soon. I, I hope I'm wrong, but uh, that's, uh, that's how it is uh, going now. No? So unless they get the vaccine, they can go back to the normal, uh, normal way of life including the normal way of delivering education. All right, so saan na muna yung face-to-face? Uh, -face? Alam ko, um, we all prefer face-to-face, -face, no? Yeah, hindi naman yan, huwag hindi naman yan, face-to-face. Lips-to-lips -face. <laughs> naman yan, eh. So, no, hindi, hindi, just kidding. Iba naman yun. Uh, so, iba, iba pa rin talaga. Sabi, well, sabi ng mga experts, Iba pa rin yung face-to-face uh, -face learning than virtual learning. May advantages pa rin yan. No? Uh, hindi naman lahat kayang i-solve ng technology. But uh, I think uh, for some time we'll have to adapt to the flexible learning options and uh, including online delivery of education. Our new normal now involves technology. Technology, um, information technology. Everything should be technology assisted, technology mediated. Uh, and when we talk about uh, flexible learning options, we also refer to flexibility in the teach teaching. So before we even uh, think about uh, acquiring the sophisticated learner management systems, building the cyber infrastructure, we should uh, always uh, think first of our of our uh, human resources, our school personnel. Kaya ba nila? No? Because it will be useless. You may be uh, acquiring the most sophisticated uh, systems and technology, but without a trained personnel to implement and to to handle all of this, it will all be useless. So unahin ninyong mag-invest sa training ng faculty training ng human resources, especially our educators, especially our teachers and faculty. Uh, so, dati ang hirap kumbinsihin ng mga faculty and teachers to use technology. No? Yung iba talagang ayaw pa rin. Gusto traditional way, chalk and blackboard. Uh, hindi marunong mag-PowerPoint. Hindi marunong gumawa ng PowerPoint presentation. So, ngayon, we have no choice. All right. Whether we like it or not, you have to train. You have to train. You have you have to equip yourself with the um, new trends uh, in this area of flexible learning. All right. And of course, you build your cyber infrastructure for your virtual classes. You have uh, you have to have an LMS. Marami tayong experts uh, who can uh, share on that. No? So you need to address interconnectivity. If you're doing online. 
if you're doing uh, fully online classes, you have to address that, not only the bandwidth in the in the campus. No? So most of the schools have that already, but uh, the problem really now is on the Wi-Fi connection of the students or connection of the students uh, to the internet while they are at home. And uh, not all families, not all parents can afford that. That's why here we need the intervention of the government. We need the government to address that. Otherwise, education will no longer be accessible when we move towards uh, virtual learning options, but the students are, uh, are not able to access this, uh, this delivery of learning, then we will fail. Then we, then we do not, um, then we do not uh, give meaning to the mandate of our, our constitution, of, of our law on the accessibility of quality education. So it has to be accessible. It has to be inclusive. In the in my, my opportunities to to engage with our with our legislators and with the um, members of the IATF, I always uh, push for the uh, needed support. Sana mapagbigyan tayo on this matter of uh, interconnectivity. So representing the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations. I said that uh, there should be government mediation or uh, government assistance in uh, asking for the private telecoms companies to provide complementary access or uh, free access or, or kahit man lang reduced rates on the uh, mobile data packages, on, the, on uh, Wi-Fi, uh, capabilities for our students and for our faculty. Kahit ngayon lang pong ano, kahit ngayon lang pong darating na school year or semester, sana po mapagbigyan tayo. It will really help a lot. So, uh, we're we're appealing, we're talking to these telecoms companies, but uh, I'm sure it will help a lot if the government can help in this discussion. All right. Okay, as I've said earlier, you have to train your teachers and faculty on the use of technology on content development. No? Otherwise, wala, bali wala to, no? then uh, we just have to wait until everything is clear, until we're all uh, clear to go back to our classrooms. No? But uh, I think that will take a very long time no? before we can really go back to the normal way. And so, we have no choice. No? Our teachers should train. Dapat magsimula na yan. Uh, ngayon na, no? ngayong May, if you want to uh, to open as soon as possible, if we want our school to be ready, we have to be, uh, we have to prepare our teachers very well uh, because that is now the new normal. No? So, mga teachers natin, uh, hindi na siguro, ano, no? hindi na voluminous yung records. Hindi katulad nung araw, yung mga teachers, yung mga teachers natin, laging may uh, la maraming dalang bags, no? multiple bags they carry at least four bags no ang laman ng bag bag din no? uh, test papers and uh, hard copies of documents uh, lesson plan ngayon hindi na no so hindi na in no multiple bags are out uh, usb is in no? so madaling dahilin dalahin no oh, ayan very creative way no so may bago ng uh, ano ngayon so magaan para sa mga mga teachers but uh, seriously uh, there we should address that that ano uh, that uh, that digital divide you know, between the uh, digital natives our students and uh, the millennials and the younger generations and uh, with their with their professors with their teachers who are presumed to be uh, digital immigrants, no? they're they're slowly migrating to the digital world. No? So we have to bridge that gap, and uh, we have to do it now on a, on a faster pace, and we, because we only have a few uh, months left before we we consider opening our our school year. So it has to happen. The training should happen between now and June until July at the most. So we can open in August. 
It's also important to involve the parents. It's important to involve uh, the parents. You have to ask them also, are they comfortable with, uh, with the flexible learning options? Are they okay? Now you can ask them, what do they prefer, face-to-face, -face, uh, fully online, minimal face, or minimal face-to-face -face of the teacher? Is it blended or e-learning or traditional classroom setup? I should also get their uh, opinion on the matter. And uh, how, how long uh, do they uh, prefer their children to be in front of the computers, for example, before they feel that... Uh, that the attention will be uh, deviated no? or how much time will they devote to assisting the their children to uh, to do their uh, their learning at home no? because not all parents have the luxury of time they're also working they're also they're also under flexible working arrangements uh, so they cannot uh, devote their time fully so you also have to ask them all right, uh, you have to convince them. Now, otherwise, uh, some of the parents are, are considering sitting or um, allowing their kids to stay at home for, for one school year and the, then just enroll next school year when the pandemic is over or when the, when the uh, problem with the coronavirus is solved. No? So you have to convince your parents that um, that this is okay, that uh, it is safe, and, um, and 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 learning will continue with the flexible learning option. You have time constraints. You only have uh, again May to July to do all the preparations. If you are looking at uh, a school opening in August at the latest, so uh, focus on the essential learning areas. Now, when you develop your your uh, your learning, your your curriculum, no, and your learning materials in the school. You have to go back to the essentials. No, if if there's uh, one thing good that uh, this pandemic has uh, brought us, it is the it is the reminder to focus on the essentials. No, the same is with learning. We have now to focus on the the core learning areas, the essential essential subjects, and do away with those that are unnecessary or not urgent. Okay, so science, math, and English probably. Well, some experts would uh, tell you that uh, those are uh, the focus subjects that, that you, you need and do away with the others. And uh, those that require uh, physical activity, those that require uh, gatherings, uh, bawal paksi, and so let's uh, do away with that. Field trips, hindi mo na, wala mo ng field trips. Kung gusto makakita ng tiger ng bata, manood na lang muna kayo ng Tiger King sa Netflix. <laughs> okay, now, let's uh, look at the uh, by law. No? What, is, uh, what does the law uh, say, laws say on, uh, on the means of uh, delivering education? No? What are our limitations? What is the mandate when it comes to this? And uh, of course, you have this constitutional principle or mandate of academic freedom. And it's uh, basically, you can combine all of these uh, modes of delivery and you can even uh, come up with a new one as long as uh, they're not restrictive, they're not uh, unfair, all right? And that it complies with the minimum requirements of our education uh, regulatory bodies, then you're okay with that, no? You're free to adapt modes, no? Because the the um part of the academic freedom is to is, is the the authority or the power of the school to determine how education is delivered diba? academic freedom you remember the uh, the four freedoms subsumed in the term academic freedom as um enunciated in a long line of cases the garcia case the ateneo versus capulong case no they all trace uh, their discussions on the very old American jurisprudence, you know, Sweezy versus Hampshire, uh, and in that case, the um, the court 
uh, provided or enumerated the freedom subsumed in the term academic freedom. It is the power of the school to determine on academic grounds who shall teach, what shall be taught, how it shall be taught, and who shall be admitted to study. Remember that? Also emphasis on uh, on uh, how it shall be taught. No? So dun papasok yung yung delivery modes and means. All right. So it it is uh, it is constitutionally protected. It is protected by law. You can actually do that. No. And, and um, not even the courts of law um, can uh, pass judgments on matters that are purely academic, as long as they are fair. And as long as, of course, there is um, um, if there is fairness, all right, and it complies with the minimum standards as provided by the regulatory bodies. No? So basically, you have that flexibility and latitude, all right. But uh, of course, now the uh, we are we are recognizing the the police power of the state, all right, and uh, because of general welfare. All priorities, all concerns now will have uh, will have to take a back seat and allow the state to exercise police power. When we refer to police power, we do not uh, refer to uh, to the power to arrest, no power to apprehend. Hindi po yun, no power to establish checkpoints. Hindi po yun ang ibig sabihin ng police power. Police power refer to the power of the state to enact laws that promote the general welfare general safety and welfare of the people so ngayon yan po ang nangyayari no yung education of course while they are important uh, uunahin natin yung safety and security ng lahat general welfare no because of the national health emergency and in fact it has uh, it has been uh, enhanced and uh, supplemented and strengthened with the uh, emergency powers granted to the president by virtue of the Bayanihan uh, uh, to heal as one act. All right, so we recognize that, that uh, there is police power, all right, over our uh, our educational institutions. No? And so we have, to, we have to follow certain regulations that promote uh, the general welfare and the safety of the public, all right. But we also have to remember that the state has a high responsibility for education of its citizens and has an interest in prescribing regulations to promote education. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, when whenever I push for ideas and uh, comments, no, talagang divided, no? uh, maraming, uh, marami ring, uh, adverse reactions and comments. Like, for example, when I... Um, I think in one of my interviews and in one of the articles written um, uh, from from uh, my interviews uh, with with some reporters, yung when I emphasize the the possible social and economic impact of the delay on the school opening, maraming nagreact na sabi nila life before uh, before money, no inuuna ng mga schools yung pera, no pero you know, you have to put it on context. Yung mga ideas po natin that we're trying to push. Uh, of course, it is preconditioned on uh, on compliance with with health protocols, with safety uh, measures no, provided by our uh, health authorities. Hindi naman po natin sinasabi na babalik na tayo sa class and we go back to the normal way of uh, education. Hindi po yun ang sinasabi natin. What we're saying is that uh, when we when we plan for uh, what we do you know, when we when the quarantine is lifted we're just saying that uh, we'll try let's try our best you know, to not to further delay or disrupt the learning of our students because it is important uh, yun po ang um, sinasabi natin so uh, all right now let's go to school calendar all right this is also a big issue for a lot of the schools Kailan ba tayo talaga mag-open? No? So, um, uh, to, to, to the school administrators who are here, uh, kung uh, meron na po kayong uh, schedule ng pag-open uh, or preferred uh, month 
or date of, uh, of of opening of your school year, you can type it in the comments so we can also see. Sino ba yung ready na ng June? No? Of course, um, subject to the regulations that may be released by the Department of Education and the uh, Commission on Higher Education and the school opening. Uh, so, ano po ang preferred ninyo? O sa tingin ninyo na tamang uh, panahon? So, yung mga parents, kung meron tayong parents na nandito ngayon, you can also uh, uh, comment no, on the on the ideal schedule of school opening no if you if you have uh, okay so school calendar no so pinag-uusapan ngayon pero ang um, marami nang tatanong so kailan ba talaga tayo ang dapat na mag-open no? anong schedule so Bago, habang hinihintay natin yung go signal from the Department of Education, from um, the Commission on Higher Education, from the IATF, dapat nagsisimula na rin tayo sa paghanda. Dapat uh, yung mga sinabi natin kanina, pinag-usapan natin about flexible learning, about uh, uh, training of our faculty, pwede natin gawin yan because our readiness will determine our schedule of school opening. Okay, so... Of course, um, habang hinihintay natin, but as I've said, the private education sector has academic freedom. It has the right to reasonable regulation of its institutions. So, uh, pwede tayo, meron tayong wide uh, flexibility and latitude. Ngayon ang tanong, ready ka ba? No? Ready ba yung institution niyo? So, focus on your readiness while we wait uh, for the advice uh, from our education authorities. But legally speaking, uh, uh, RA 7797, ito po yung batas that prescribes the number of uh, school days and which provides a schedule of school opening. Sabi dun sa batas, ang sabi po dito is um, schools uh, shall open not earlier than June but not later than uh, July. Oh, sorry, not later than August of uh, the year. So, kung pinag-uusapan na September opening, you have to amend the law. Kasi, sabi ng batas, excuse me, ang sabi ng batas ay hanggang uh, ang pinaka-late na napagbubukas ng class is August. Okay. Now, uh, so, if it is uh, between June to August, pwede, pwede nga uh, i-ano, Pwedeng i-adjust. Alright. Now, the um, R8-7797, uh, interestingly, so yung nagre-require ng uh, not earlier than June and not later than August, you know, this law applies only to basic education. Uh, uh, some experts may have a different view, but that has been my uh, view uh, consistently. Uh, uh, every time this uh, change in school calendar uh, was brought up, uh, even way before. No? Remember uh, those uh, times when uh, actually doing opening ng opening season, no? uh, may, may mga nagpo-propose from legislators, mga congressmen and uh, congressmen and senators, they proposed the change of school calendar to September no? to avoid yung mga disruptions brought about by uh, by by typhoons, etc. So ako, sinasabi ko, the basic education uh, siguro pag-uusapan, pero sa higher education, whether you need to change the school calendar, that is the discretion of the uh, higher education institutions. And uh, it is not covered by, uh, if there is a change, can, they can easily change it because uh, the law on uh, on school calendar, yung RA 7797, applies only to the basic education institutions. Bakit po? Let's say yung... Um, Yung RA 7797 was enacted in 1994. Uh, the same year um, that the Commission on Higher Education was uh, created also by law. In fact, yung law, yung CHED Act was uh, enacted earlier than uh, RA 7797, dun sa school calendar. And it's very clear in RA 7797 that it applies only to basic education because it mentions the uh, the secretary of uh, the department of education culture and sports and uh, in the um, ched law 
it also mentions there very specific that it is a separate body distinct from the and independent from the department of education culture and sports at the time so anong ibig sabihin ibig sabihin yung RA 77 97 applies only to basic education institutions o yung uh, nagsasabi na June to August ang opening so hindi applicable yan sa higher education uh, institutions although may meron namang uh, um, CMOs yung CHED on school calendar na very ano very similar to the uh, provisions of uh, of Re Republic Act 7797 no? pero may konting pagkakaiba no so ngayon kung pag-uusapan natin school opening hindi naman tayo siguro dapat sumunod sa pagdating sa higher education hindi po naman applicable doon yung uh, RA7797 Now, school opening. Uh, so, pagtapos ng school opening, uh, I think even before you uh, uh, you take up uh, school opening, uh, for some institutions, especially higher education institutions, there is also an issue on closing the school calendar. Yung, yung basic education institutions kasi natin, uh, nung time na in-implement ang uh, enhanced community quarantine tapos na ang school year no kasi march di ba karamihan ng mga uh, high schools elementary high schools nagsasara na or nagsasara na ng school calendar by march so or kung meron man na hindi pa tapos karamihan sa kanila is schedule lang ng graduation or or final exams no konti na lang no so it was very easy for them to close the school calendar but for higher education institutions, merong mga institutions na nasa midterm pa lang, no, na midterm pa lang sila of their school calendar because they opened uh, last year uh, in August, no. Hindi sila nagbukas ng June or uh, July, no. So uh, sila yung affected, no. So how how will they continue? So ang uh, karamihan sa kanila nag uh, they also ended their school calendar. No? But um uh is it is it legal no for you to close this? Kung ikaw basic education for example. Pwede ba 'yon uh, third quarter pa lang isara mo na and then you pass everyone or you you assess uh, their performance or uh, uh, satisfaction of the academic requirements? i ano mo lang muna i um uh, uh stop muna no sa third quarter at i assess pwede ba yon no under republic act uh, 7797 it appears that yes no pwedeng gawin ng school yon why because the prescribed number of uh, school days under RA 7797 sabi sa batas it is uh, inclusive of uh, disruptions cancellations brought about by calamities, uh, both man-made and um, natural calamities. So, katulad ngayon, no, uh, yung disruption is uh, because of the pandemic. Hindi kailangan na, hindi kailangan na uh, magkaroon ng make-up classes para dun sa missed class days. Uh, so, pwede nang tapusin ng, ng schools. Yung mga yung uh, uh, mass promotions no if there is such a thing o okay, yung tawag nila mass promotions um, ano ba ang uh, ano ba mga legal issues diyan is, is it legal ano ba ang uh, flexibility ano ba ang authority ng mga schools to do that so, first of all the um, the authority to 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 provide the grades yung uh, academic judgment ng school that is something that uh, pertains exclusively to our educational institutions. But this is even beyond review by the courts. No, as long as it is fair, it is reasonable, it is based on scholastic uh, performance of the student, the academic judgment on whether they pass or they fail, uh, pertain, pertains exclusively to the educational institutions. No? In, walang pwede magsabi na ibagsak sila or ipasa except for the educational institutions. 
uh, itself no? where the students are enrolled because again this is an academic discretion an academic judgment recognized by the by the courts and then it is uh, not it is beyond review with the court uh, in in one case in the landmark case on this in the supreme court the courts cannot be cannot convert itself as uh, admission committees or uh, as uh, academic review committees of the school it cannot substitute its own judgment to the academic discretion of the duly constituted educational institution sabi pa na supreme court otherwise if we allow our courts to review the academic judgment of the schools then the courts will be swamped with complaints for grades and even uh, those uh, who are not admitted change of grades and the petition for admission petition to be admitted in schools and uh, it will clog our courts uh, so hindi hindi ito this is not subject to review by anyone so yung siguro kung may tinatawag na mass promotions i think it's just that the schools have uh, become more understanding because of the situation and that they have uh, they have assessed or evaluated their students based on their performance as of uh, the date uh, of the uh, of the uh, implementation of the ECQ uh, so okay lang yon ngayon sa higher education institution naman sinasabi natin uh, hindi sila cover ng RA7797 so interestingly if you look at uh, the uh, applicable CHED memorandum order sa kanila yung school calendar sa higher education it says that the the disruptions the suspensions are exclusive of the 200 uh, the 220 class days or yung 200 uh, class days uh, prescribed by the commission ibig sabihin kung mayro mga disruption they have to they have to make up o kaya lang ngayon i don't know kung paano gagawin but uh, there was an advisory from the Commission on Higher Education that the schools can uh, decide on how they close their academic calendars using flexible options. No, so in effect, the Commission on Higher Education uh, relaxed the um, the regulations on uh, on schools implementing online and. Um, flexible uh, delivery modes kasi dati privilege yun. Uh, so, in one of the advisories, I think advisory number six ng uh, Commission on Higher Education, pinayagan yung mga mga higher education institutions na nasa kalagitnaan pa lang ng kanilang academic calendar to close it. Uh, magkaroon ng exam uh, through online and other flexible learning modes para lang ma-close na yung kanilang academic calendar. And, uh, so that uh, especially yung mga graduating students o oh, yun ang nandoon sa advisory ng, uh, ng commission on higher education all right so probably yung uh, if we're looking at the how things are going probably there is the, the last class you know, has already uh, happened uh, for last year for school year 2019 baka matagal na ulit tayong babalik sa physical classroom setup you know? So it is our last done or last class i mean uh, so uwi muna uwi muna ang ating mga teachers no pack up muna all right if you have questions please don't forget to type it in the uh, comment uh, section of this uh, facebook live session okay Another issue on um, closing the school calendar. Kakangawit. Mas madaling mag-lecture na nakatayo. Okay. Next uh, issue. Uh, refunds. Refunds. Dapat ba mag-refund? Dapat, um, dapat ba tayo mag-refund? Uh, mga magulang dahil uh, lahat tayo ngayon ay naghihikahos. No? So, is there a law that compels educational institutions to refund the tuition because the academic calendar was cut short? 
because the uh, the school calendar was uh, suspended, and that since it can no longer continue, then it should it refund the, the fees. No, should it refund the fees? You know, tanong natin. Okay, now, uh, yung pung matter on whether a refund uh, should be implemented uh, by the educational institutions. This is a matter that should be resolved on a school-to-school -school basis. I'm talking about, of course, private educational institutions. They have to deal with this or resolve this at the level of their of their schools, of their school community. Oh, kasi iba-ibang uh, iba-iba ang sitwasyon. Merong mas malaking schools, merong mas maliliit, merong uh, yung mga big schools where they uh, start with the very big uh, base of their tuition uh, tuition rates malaki na talaga ang dati pa matagal malaki na ang tuition nila and that they can afford some flexibility they can refund no? they can refund uh, they can return some money pero yung iba uh, mean that they may not be in the same uh, or similar case now they they just rely they they rely fully on tuition collection and then they 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 price their tuition very low uh, ngayon bigla nangyari ito are they uh, are they violating any law if they do not refund uh, should they uh, find it uh, um uh, 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 not possible uh, for them to refund because of the lack of resources meron ba silang pwede ba silang kasuhan no yun ang tanong so well uh, siguro sa mga nakikinig na educational institutions administrators dito you may want to look at the this provision of the education act yung batas pambansa bilang 232 uh, this is a very important uh, provision in the law where it says that uh, the all all tuition payment no? and and um, whether it's a uh, tuition or other fees they all form part of the institutional funds no? they are institutional funds and that they can pull it as part of their uh, resources all right they're part of their financial resources institutional meaning you pull everything so that uh, you sustain your operations you need to be institutional funds as uh, as opposed to a trust fund uh, doctrine or principle where you cannot use the funds except for the particular purpose but here the law says that tuition forms part of the institutional fund uh, so ibig sabihin pwedeng gamitin ng school yung mga na collect nila for uh, to pool as part of their financial resources to address other needs of the institution especially now no, so this provision of law becomes very very relevant no? kasi paano ka mag -re refund eh, eh wala ka nang ang pambayad ng sweldo no no work no pay na yung mga mga teachers mo no? or wala ka nang uh, wala ka nang pang sustain ng payroll o paano yon anong pang -re refund mo no? so of course gagamitin mo yung funds na 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 nasa inyo as part of the institutional fund but of course uh, there should be there, it should be reasonable the, the school should be justified they should be fair all right it, and of course i appeal to the education institution if you have the money the refund and you think that the, these are not used and especially because they were paid for a very specific uh, uh, purpose uh, of course, you need you need to refund it. If it cannot be done soon, then you can you can schedule it when they when we we go back to normal operations. No? But then, meron din ganitong principle where if you do if you no longer have uh, funds and you can you can use uh, all um, that you have collected as part of the institutional fund. All right. And uh, alam niyo, inisip ko din yung ano eh, syempre, mga magulang uh, nahirap na sila, no? Kailangan din nila ng kailangan din nila ng uh, 
ng uh, funds no, to sustain also uh, their day-to-day -day needs. No? So, importante din yan. Pero kailangan po natin in, in, uh, intindihin din yung kalagayan ng mga eskwelahan ngayon. Ano? At yung lalo-lalo na yung kalagayan ng mga teachers natin. Okay. And refund presupposes payment. Diba? Uh, full payment. No? So yung iba naman, ang bilis mag-raise ng refund. Pero no, pag nung nagbabayad, pahirapan. No? And the schools are... The schools are very understanding of parents. They, when they give promissory notes, no promissory note, uh, pakatagal pa, patong patong na yung promissory notes. And schools are very understanding. And now I think uh, this is the time that uh, you can uh, reciprocate, no, and return the favor to the schools. So yung mga schools sa ngayon, siguro ang humingi ng uh, pangunawa ninyo. No? especially for their uh, school personnel. Uh, so, may mga iba talaga, mabilis sa pag-usapan, refund, ang bilis. Pero nung uh, pagbayaran ng uh, school fees, ah, talagang uh, pahirapan. Ano? Okay. Now, as we, um, as we start to ease uh, our lockdown, our quarantine uh, policies, I would like to reiterate that uh, the importance of uh, coming up with the policies on education, even before the lifting of the, before the extension of the the ECQ, I was already saying that um, probably the schools will be at the last or the bottom of the loop or the list of the of the sectors who will be who will be uh, allowed to go back to their to, to normal uh, to normal situation where they, where where they will be allowed to go into uh, their normal operations why because the schools involve uh, the vulnerable individuals we have uh, minor children we have senior faculty uh, so and and it involves uh, gatherings crowded places so talagang mahuhuli tayo. Ma maraming pababalikin mauuna sa atin, mahuhuli ang mga schools. That's the tendency. But I always say that we should also find a way no, na makabalik tayo sa normal operations. Huwag namang wag naman nating isipin na na dahil high risk eh wag na lang nating ihuli na sila, no? It is also very dangerous as I said. And like I always say, a social and economic impact is uh, very important. Social. Imagine yung mga estudyante natin. No? Kailan pa sila huling pumasok? March. Kung papasok sila ng very late or if you decide to suspend their education, imagine ang uh, development, no? impact sa kanila. Yung social development. And of course, iba pa rin yung uh, when they socialize, when they interact with their um, peers in a normal uh, setting. So, sana yun ang pagtuunan natin. Ngayon, flexible learning, pero dapat down the line, we should be planning <clears throat> on how to uh, at least give some uh, semblance of uh, normalcy in the lives of our students. Sana uh, pagtuunan ng pag-aaral, ng pansin, paano sila makakabalik doon to address the social impact. And of course, yung economic impact both on the school and on the families. Yung economic impact sa school personnel, no, alam na natin yon. Walang school, so walang uh, collection, walang revenue, pero nagbabayad ng, ng, uh, ng salaries. And a lot of the schools can no longer sustain that. Yung iba, sabi nila, hanggang katapusan lang ng April, so marami po ngayon, nasa no work, no pay na. In fact, based on our survey, the private school survey, 60% said that they can no longer pay uh, beyond May. All right, and 40% uh, when we did this uh, this survey the first time, 40% no by end of April will implement no work, no pay for their for their teachers and school personnel. So imagine yung economic impact sa schools and sa school personnel pero meron ding economic impact yung uh, 
um, suspension of uh, of classes to the parents or even uh, when we implement flexible learning options lalo na sa public schools in some public schools yung mga estudyante when they go to school they have free meals uh, so kahit pa paano nakakabawas yun sa gastos at pangangailangan ng mga ng mga magulang pero ngayon since they will be at home they will spend more time at home at hindi na baka hindi na ma, mabigyan na ng uh, hindi matutukan no, yung mga libre uh, pagkain na dating binibigay ng public school no, so that's also possible so it affects also the the impact and of course may costing yung may cost din sa in terms of gadgets equipment no? as, I, as i've said hindi naman lahat ng magulang kayang i-provide yan so it also has uh, economic impact so i hope we avoid that so maraming ano maraming maraming uh, reading uh, materials on on this issue so i hope uh, we can use the rich source of information to make the proper decision decisions especially for our policy makers sabi nila di ba nung nag-uumpisa pa yung uh, bago pa nag nung nagsisimula pa lang yung yung ECQ sabi nila mga prone yung mga senior citizen no? tapos sa uh, yung mga 40 yung mga 40 above no? tama ba yun ang mga prone no so yung mga bata hindi naman so maaring totoo yun. kasi konti ang mga no walang masyadong um, uh, infected ng mga bata walang masyado doon sa mga, sa data na lumalabas so probably na talagang maganda yung ano natin mabilis yung pagsuspend ng uh, mga classes kaya hindi siguro na how it's also a possibility kaya hindi na hawa yung mga bata pero i think sila um yung yung Kung mahawa man sila yung kanilang uh, immune system, I think, no, is able to withstand uh, the uh, virus. So, hindi fatal sa kanila. No? Pero syempre, yung mga magulang, they're also very careful. Imagine mo, pag, pag pumasok na yung mga bata, no? pag uh, babalik na sila sa bahay, paano kaya yun? No? Dati, yung mga lola, pag uwi ng, uh, pag uwi ng bata sa bahay, takbuhan na yun. Takbuhan yung uh, no? sa salubong yung lola. No, sa bata baka ngayon nako si lola na prone uh, madaling uh, mahawa baka tumakbo pa ali palayo no sa um, kanyang apo kapag uh, galing sa school at wala pang vaccine na nahahanap no, para sa coronavirus so you really have to look at all sides and uh, to hear all opinions on this uh, this the, the decision on opening the school should not only be a decision left to uh, our uh, our our authorities in the government but also with those who manage and administer our schools and uh, also importantly the uh, parents in our school community we also also should hear them all right now Let's go to uh, uh, another important issue, which is the labor issue. Marami sa inyo, ito yung iniintay dahil talaga namang ano, divided, marami, divided ang sector ba sa issue na to sa schools. So, hindi ko alam, depende sa, ano siguro, baka dito merong uh, hindi, hindi magugustuhan yung discussion natin, depende sa, depende sa appreciation ninyo. If you are, uh, uh, if you are a school administrator or school owner and uh, you are uh, you are an employee no? you're a teacher you're a faculty no? Kasi may, with, when you talk about remedies remedies you know, management prerogatives so when but when you also uh, when you're a teacher or faculty you also need to survive no? what about your job security what about your security of tenure so you naman ang interest mo no so the interest may be varied but i think more than ever we should understand our situation now and we should come together and hope that we hurdle these issues 
we hurdle the pandemic so that we can go back and uh, go back to normal operation and uh, preserve that uh, relationship, you know, preserve that uh, that employment uh, that we have now. Uh, mahirap, mahirap, ano, mahirap mawalan ng uh, faculty. Mahirap mawalan ng licensed teacher dahil lalo na ako sa private ka. Private schools, ang hirap. Uh, nang hirap uh, maintain yung yung mga teachers with license uh, kasi lumilipat sila sa public schools dahil mas mataas ang sweldo doon or minsan magchi-change ng careers uh, ay hindi na magtuturo so we cannot afford no so right now we also want to keep our teachers and faculty faculty in higher education ganun din mahirap kumuha ng qualified Uh, you know, may master's degree and all of the necessary trainings no? and expertise. Kaya hindi po pwedeng basta-basta mawala ang faculty natin and, uh, and our teachers. We want to keep them as much as possible. No? Kaya lang, we also have to balance it with the viability of the school. No? Hindi mo mapitigilan pag wala ka ng resources at gusto nang umalis ng faculty. What do you do? No? Okay, now, Uh, let's go first to uh, uh, okay some uh, some issues. No, so our schools are our schools covered by the ECQ. No, of course by this time, alam na natin to. No, because only private establishments providing basic necessities and such activities related to food and medicine etc. are allowed to open during the enhanced community quarantine and um, the IATF provided uh, the guidelines and listed uh, those establishments that are allowed to open. So you see here, public market, supermarket, groceries, medical clinics, etc. No? Pharmacies, drugstores, sila pwede sila mag-open. If, you have, if in your school you have uh, these establishments, it'll be okay. No? In some schools, they have, uh, they have uh, in, in their properties, they have, uh, no? they have pharmacies, drugstores, no? and uh, of course, hospitals. No? You're allowed to open. I don't think there's a there's a supermarket in, in a school. No, wala naman siguro. But unless you have uh, this establishment in your property, pwede ka pa rin mag-open. No? Okay. Now, can schools allow school personnel to report for work during the ECQ no? or uh, during the uh, quarantine? Ngayon, meron na tayong GCQ pero meron pa rin guidelines. No? Okay. In the school setting, dun sa um, uh, IATF resolution number nine, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, or twenty-nine, no, nakalagay doon that uh, for higher education, the uh, higher education institutions may uh, allow a skeletal workforce to report to the school physically for the purpose of closing the school calendar and to process the credentials of its students, particularly those who are graduating. All right, so parang uh, it presupposes uh, or it implies that uh, other than that, the school personnel cannot report to the school. No? But, uh, you know, even uh, during the ECQ, bago pa na-extend, uh, the schools, there are certain employees in the schools that uh, who are who perform essential tasks, all right, that... Uh, They, they still need to go at least no even for intermittent or small uh, or short periods of time they have to go to the school because they perform an essential task kanimbawa yung uh, nasa accounting no yung magpo-process ng payroll no? of course this, this can be done <coughs> this can be done uh, online pero hindi naman lahat ng uh, ng schools can do this fully online no? so Uh, there are certain uh, parts of the processes that need to be accomplished inside the school grounds, no? in their offices, in the school. So, paano sila? No? Um, those who need to submit grades, and this cannot be done fully online. No? And, those, uh, and um, uh, those who process uh, student uh, uh, subsidy applications yung nagpo-process ng TS or ESC or mga vouchers even the TSS and those who process the application for camp 
yung mga ginagawa minsan hindi yan kaya na fully online sa bahay so sila i think uh, they 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 should be allowed no to go to the school and yung uh, siguro hindi lang for higher ed also for basic education hindi pa na distribute yung cards no uh, so i think uh, the same situation applies to the basic education magpapasweldo ka din eh no and it's important no uh, some uh, some of uh, the employees should perform this essential task in fact, doon sa bago ni-release yung IATF uh, Resolution Number 29, merong advisory yung CHED. Advisory uh, number 9 or number 6. Advisory number 6. Kasama doon, sabi ng uh, Commission in Higher Education. Uh, those, uh, while the schools are closed, the, uh, the uh, personnel who perform essential tasks may be allowed. No? And specifically, mentioning those who process the payroll etc no? so i think uh, we have some uh, we should also uh, have some flexibility there hindi naman sila papasok na matagal no but of course you have to uh, you have to make sure that, uh, that your schools observe the uh, safety and precautionary standards in the workplace even on short periods that you allow your employees performing essential tasks okay so, what reporting schedule should be followed in case employees are made to report for work during ECQ? It's a management prerogative. But the idea is they should not stay longer uh, than necessary and that uh, it only involves the skeletal work first. This is very relevant, especially those who are who will be under or who are now under GCQ. Uh, so, wala, wala dun sa mga high-risk areas like NCR, Region 4. A and B. So they can now uh, plot the schedule of their personnel. Can employees be sanctioned for refusing to work, to report for work while on ECQ? Sabi ng uh, Labor Advisory, ng Department of Labor Employment, Labor Advisory number three. Sabi, no, you cannot. No, you cannot sanction them. But of course, hindi naman lahat ng, lahat ng rules ay eh, merong exception. If it is also very clear that uh, there was a bad faith on the part of uh, the employee who refused to report for work and that there is no imminent danger naman, but uh, the employee simply uh, by bad faith or malice refuses to work or force, pwede siyang masanction doon because the prohibition is only when the reason is uh, due to imminent danger uh, and that the, uh, the employee refused to report for work. He cannot sanction the uh, employee. But of course, if there is some other reason, there is some basis like malice or bad faith, or there is an intention to sabotage whatever the uh, operation of the school, of course, the employee may be sanctioned. Aside from uh, intermittent reporting and flexible work arrangements, what other remedial measures can schools adopt during the effectivity of the ECQ to minimize its uh, effect on the uh, workforce? Of course, meron tayong work from home or telecommuting. Telecommuting in the universal sense, not necessarily referring to the uh, to the telecommuting law. No? Yung uh, work arrangements that they can uh, work uh, in a remote place, not necessarily uh, at home, but uh, it is working on a place different from their uh, work uh, in their workstation back in the uh, in the school. So. You can allow them to work from home if it is possible. No? But uh, if they cannot, then uh, then you should, you're not compelled to uh, implement a work from home scheme. All right. What are the guidelines for the implementation of a work from home program? Wala pong, ano pa, wala pa pong exact uh, rules on that. Uh, in fact, yung telecommuting law, na, na, in, uh, na that was enacted uh, last year if I'm not mistaken bagong bagong batas pa lang ito uh, it is still under pilot implementation as a research and development pa lang no? the uh, industries that are unlikely to implement industries unlikely to implement uh, work from home scheme they're being encouraged to implement it uh, under um, the uh, pilot uh, 
implementation. So, wala pa. Wala pang, uh, although may implementing rules na yan, wala pang uh, malinaw na guidelines. Oh, so, the schools, if you want to implement a work from home uh, scheme, then uh, it's um, practically, you can, you can provide your own rules on that. You know, because uh, wala pang uh, guidelines release ang ating Department of Labor and Employment. But of course, you can follow some of the uh, standards provided in the telecommuting law, like uh, providing who are eligible to uh, go into work from home. You provide also, you can also come up with a code of conduct for, uh, for those who will be under um, a uh, work from home. Merong bakit may code of conduct and atabay naman. Well, you can provide code of conduct on social media or uh, or when they are uh, in cyberspace, when they interact with students, with the other members of the community. Of course, they, they they should also observe some norms and standards of behavior. So you can also provide that. Uh, you can issue a code of conduct for those who are under work from home. Also, you can also provide policies on the use of uh, school equipment, if you're uh, lending them laptops and other equipment, then you can also provide the policy. What do you do? Should they uh, should they uh, uh, register their own uh, uh, laptops to the schools, IT, etc. So that can be included. The number of work days and the hours if you're implementing a work from home scheme. It can also be provided, and of course, statutory benefits should uh, continue if you're continuing to play to uh, to pay your uh, your faculty and your teachers and your school personnel under um, under your work from home scheme. Okay, and of course, reportorial requirements. So these are the things that you can follow in coming up with the work from home uh, policy in your schools. Okay, what security measures can schools adopt to ensure the privacy of personal information while personal uh, personnel in charge of them are on work from home or telecommuting scheme? You also have to remember uh, to observe uh, the proper uh, precautionary measures in whenever we we are dealing with uh, with uh, um, records that contain personal information of our students, personal information of our of our faculty and school personnel, especially when we are dealing with all of these documents at home. So the schools can implement a policy where they limit the access of personal data of students and employees while they are working remotely. So kung hindi sila required na, um, hindi naman sila required na magkaroon ng access, do not give them access to personal records of students and, uh, and and employees or if it is if it cannot be avoided then you should um, then you should uh, uh, encrypt the data you should encrypt the the data and uh, um, anonymize data if possible if if the uh, if the personal information is not necessary in working on these documents or redact the personal information from the records okay so basically you have to observe uh, you have to observe the privacy principles even when the when you are under a work from home scheme all right let's go to uh, salaries and compensation uh, very sensitive na itong uh, topic na ito all right, on, on payroll, all right, salaries and compensation. No work, no pay. Are schools required to pay the salaries of its employees during the enhanced community quarantine? And um, and the, the, the Department of Labor and Employment in its labor, labor advisory said that no. The, um, the schools are like other establishments. They are not required to pay their employees during the ECQ, all right? But of course, the establishments are highly encouraged by the Department of Labor to pay their salaries, okay, during the uh, during the quarantine. So 
I I always uh, tell the schools, you know, the, our client schools, um, that uh, you can you can actually resort to a no work no pay as a matter of extreme measure. Oh, wala ka na talagang ano eh, ibabayad. So what do you do? So no work no pay talaga. Uh, but but uh, before you go to a no work no pay, siguro you can also consider reduced pay for reduced work. All right, or uh, or paying everyone a fixed amount while on while reduced, but you you are able to uh, stretch the resources to as many employees. Pwede yon. No? But um, as a matter of extreme measure, then uh, it is not illegal to impose a no work no scheme, no pay scheme. Uh, paano naman yung iba sabi nila we cannot uh, we cannot implement a no work uh, no pay we cannot uh, implement that because we need them to work pwede bang no pay uh, work but no pay or pwede ba kaming uh, makiusap muna na i-defer muna yung payment ng salaries hanggang sa mag-open na yung school year para meron na kaming uh, tuition collection. No, pwede ba yun? Kasi hindi namin pwedeng no work dahil pag hindi nag-work, hindi rin kami makakapagbukas. Uh, so some may be in, under no work, no pay, but the others, we have to ask them to work, uh, but uh, we have to tell them that uh, we will pay them uh, later on. So pwede ba yun? Well, kung papayag yung uh, employees ninyo, then that's okay. Otherwise, it's involuntary servitude, di ba? So, and it's, and it's uh, illegal. Uh, so, depend, nasa, nasa sa inyo po yan, sa pag-uusap uh, ng management at ng mga empleyado. Alright, I understand that uh, these are real situations. So, uh, I know in some schools, it really happens. Kailangan nilang kailangan magtrabaho na yung mga prepare for the next school year kaya lang hindi pa nila kayang hindi pa kaya ng school na bayaran sila no? it really happens for for the small schools uh, what happens man if the school employee contracts covid-19 in the performance of duties all right yung the said employees uh, shall be entitled to receive sickness sickness benefits under the social securities act and can also avail of existing company health care benefits in addition to field health hospital benefit if a member but um is uh is a uh, school personnel in a, in a private uh, in the private school entitled to hazard pay the answer is no no yung in announce ng uh, pangulo before na hazard pay it's only for the for the uh, employees in the government okay what about leave of absence pwede bang i-advance na yung leave yung accrued uh, leave credits uh, to be paid no pwede po no to avoid uh, a no work no pay situation you can uh, tell your uh, your uh, employees that they are allowed to use their leave credits no? only up to the uh, available to the number of available leave credits and then get paid tapos yung iba no work no pay but also in some schools they're saying we cannot give them uh, we cannot allow them to use the uh, the accrued and used leave credits because even then we don't uh, we don't have the funds to pay them it's really unfortunate okay okay so leave credits pwede so anong effect noon babayaran mo muna siya but uh uh during the, the following school year kung kailangan niya nang gamitin yun later on wala na hindi na hindi na siya mababayaran no? so uh, it's their choice uh, when to use it but of course um they also should know the consequence no they should also know the uh, necessary consequence of uh, what uh, they are they, they they decided no Okay, what kind of leave credits can the absences during the ECQ be charged to? Can be charged to the annual sick leave and annual uh, vacation leave. 
depending on what the company uh, implements. Uh, yung sick leave kasi yung five days uh, uh, yung five days in service incentive leave uh, and the sick leave they are being uh, these are implemented by uh, some uh, companies and even schools who do not implement a uh, vacation leave policy. Uh, so pwedeng i-charge doon or on the uh, vacation leave being uh, uh, vacation leave policy being enforced by the school. Okay, what happens if the employee does not opt to use his or her unused leave card? Is Eddie eh, no uh, no pay? No. So but the decision uh, on the uh, on whether to avail of the leave uh, benefits or not, that is the that is a decision or discretion that belongs to the employee. So, yung forced leave parang mali yon, no? Yung forced leave ayon mag-leave. Bakit mo bakit mo pipilitin na gamitin yung leave, no? So the the uh, option is with the employee. Uh, uh, so choice niya whether to use the leave now and get paid versus not uh, being paid, no? Kung uh, no work, no pay na yung school so i think we can almost uh, uh predict how how the employee will decide of course the employee will use the leave no? pero hindi maganda siguro na pipilitin sila no uh, they they have to decide no because the leave is a leave is a benefit it is a benefit to the uh, employee it should be exercised by the employee as an option what if the employee has no more leave credits available in? Of course, uh, then uh, uh, no work, no pay. No. Okay, yung camp, uh, I'll just go through this, yung uh, COVID-19 adjustment measures program. Uh, because uh, I'm saying we just uh, breeze through this because, oh, I don't know, meron po ba dito na nakatanggap ng uh, benefits under camp? Kung meron po, paki, oh. Mag-react po kayo positively. Thumbs up siguro or your heart sign. Kasi wala po akong nabalitaan na school na nakatanggap ng benefits under camp ang kanila mga empleyado when they applied. Nakapag-apply naman sila on time pero for some reason hindi po sila. Na-deny sila. And, um, uh, and some schools also received a reply from from the Department of Labor Employment saying that uh, uh, after the first uh, ECQ, no? so when it was already extended, this uh, matter is now transferred to the Department of Finance, and that uh, the schools are encouraged to apply for the for the small business wage subsidy, uh, now being handled by the DOF. But uh, if you look at the uh, industries and sectors listed uh, in the DOF. Uh, SBWS uh, uh, program wala po doon ang schools. Oh, so hindi hindi sila pwede na, na di deny no maraming mga schools denied. Wala pa rin ako na balitaan na nakatanggap ng uh, either from camp or from the small business wage uh, uh, subsidy. Oh, so sana po ay uh, mapakinggan tayo ng uh, atin pong ng IATF ng uh, economic uh, team ng ating government uh, so I'm, I'm i'm making this i'm taking this opportunity to appeal for our school personnel for them also to be given a special uh, amelioration package or benefit because uh, in all of the um, in all of the programs uh, they were rendered eligible and unqualified no so kawawa naman po sila sila po ay and uh, and also hindi po totoo na na yung mga ang affected lang yung mga part-time or part-timers yung mga hindi regular no lahat po ng uh, school personnel lahat po ng teachers lahat ng faculty sa private education institutions they're all affected by this either on a no work no pay scheme or under reduced pay okay so Sana po ay mabigyan din sila ng ayuda. Ayuda from uh, the government. Okay. And even, ano ha, even uh, uh, those in the public uh, educational institutions, yung uh, ating state universities and colleges, yung mga part-timers, yung part-time faculty dyan, hindi naman sila kasama sa budget ng SUCs uh, uh, for the salaries of their permanent employees. Marami rin sila. So, kawawa din sila. So, I hope 
magkaroon po talaga ng special uh, economic package para po sa ating mga school personnel. So again, nananawagan po tayo ay join the uh, the plea of the many of our uh, teachers and faculty here at uh, kasama na rin po yung uh, panawagan na uh, ni uh, Secretary uh, Briones and the uh, Chairman Rivera on disrespect and thank you for supporting our uh, our request to the government okay so we'll skip uh, some of the discussions on the camp kasi parang ano na ito no parang uh, hindi na wala na eh wala na yung uh, hindi na tayo nakakuha eh hindi, hindi ko alam kung uh, pagbibigyan pa tayo Malam, maraming mga school spending na yung application hindi pa denied pero hindi pa sila naka so hopefully Meron pa ring positive ano diyan. Sabi kasi kulang na daw talaga yung pondo. And uh, the school personnel not they're not included in the in those who are bound to receive uh, uh as a matter of priority, no. Okay, now I think the the uh, the issue is also um, on on labor is also after or post uh, COVID. What do we do, all right? How what how do we now manage our our labor issues? So here are some uh, remedies available to the schools, no? And depending on your uh, your actual situation, uh, you can decide which one you think is uh, is uh, implementable in your uh, in your institution. Okay, first is you can you can renegotiate, you can restructure your uh, compensation or salary structure with your with your employees even those who are regular no pwede po yun pwede kayong mag-usap kung kung may CBA pwede kayong mag uh, pwedeng reviewin din yon nakita yung pa ako wala akong <laughs> pa short kala ko hindi makikita yung awit na ako <laughs> <laughs> anyway, first is uh, you can agree on the solution with employees, but uh, consent is required. Now, if they agree, then fine. So you can renegotiate. Kung hindi sila mag-agree, you cannot. No, you cannot uh, unilaterally uh, change the contract of your permanent uh, personnel, personnel, person, permanent faculty and personnel, permanent teachers. Hindi pwedeng baguhin. So kailangan may consent. Otherwise. It violates Article 100 of the Labor Code, no? Yung uh, 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 provision of law on non-diminution of benefits under Article 100 of the Labor Code. And of course, binanggit natin kanina yung leave management. You can manage the, the leave. You can use it now. So that's also an option. Apply for government assistance, katulad ng ginagawa na natin ngayon. And then, of course, as a matter of extreme measure, retrenchment no so wag naman sana tayong dumating doon pero uh, kung talagang uh, wala na wala nang ano eh wala nang paraan no para to prevent closure of business then we we resort to extreme measures uh, allowed by our labor code yung retrenchment redundancy and, and redundancy which includes by the way yung floating status you know, floating status is uh, also uh, if this is uh, the temporary retrenchment pareho ng retrenchment pero temporary uh, floating status for 6 months all right so again as i've said you agree on a solution with employees in reducing work hours and wages so pwede po yan so you sit down with your employees uh, tingnan ninyo kung ano ba yung component ng salary nila or compensation or benefits and incentives at are conditional. So, pwede doon. Doon kayo magsisimula na magbawas. Especially those that are conditional, those that are incentives, those are based on certain milestones that they had to they had to uh, uh, satisfy, they have to meet. No? May mga schools na yung mga, mga faculty um, and teachers, they receive uh, increase in their salaries because of increase in enrollment. So probably you can also restructure that now because uh, we're not expecting the same number of uh, 
enrollment and there is a substantial decline in our enrollment for the coming school year, then you can reduce yung mga incentives uh, um, that you the incentives that we give to our um, that we give to our personnel um, because they completed the entire school year yung mga ganyan siguro pwede nating reviewin na okay and uh, decide whether we can continue to provide them to our uh, to our employees okay now, if they agree, again, as I've said, if they agree, then it's good. Uh, then you can continue with the relationship and you're, you're able to uh, to save uh, some costs and money for to sustain the operations. Otherwise, hindi ko pwede dahil violation ng Article 100 of the Labor Code. Now, let's look at, um, let's revisit yung Article 100 of the Labor Code. Kailan ba nasasabi na na there is a diminution okay there is violation of the uh, violation of the non diminution rule all right the labor code uh, prohibits employers from unilaterally eliminating or reducing the benefits please take note of the word unilateral ibig sabihin there is no agreement no kasi it's unilateral only the em employer uh, decided on it no? kaya nga sabi ko if it is uh, uh, a product of negotiation and with the consent of the employee. There is no violation of the non-diminution rule. All right. There is diminution of benefits if it is unilateral and the following requisites uh, concur. First is that the grant or benefit is founded on a policy. It is based on a policy or it has ripened into a pra the or the practice has ripened into a policy over a practice for a long period of time. Number two, the practice is consistent and deliberate, meaning it is not conditional. The practice is not due to error in construction or application of a doubtful or difficult question of law. All right. If it is, uh, for example, it's paid in error or by mistake, if you, if you suddenly realize that and you you unilaterally discontinued it, it is not violation of the non-diminution rule. Number four, then the, the diminution or uh, discontinuance is done unilaterally by the employer, as already stated. Alam niyo po yung Article 100 of the Labor Code on non-diminution. This is not, well, not actually a labor law concept. No? It, is a, it is based on the civil law principle on mutuality of contracts. What makes it illegal is not the uh, elimination, reduction, or withdrawal of the benefit or the compensation. What makes it illegal is that when it is done unilaterally, meaning without the consent. Why? Because this is based on the principle of mutuality of contracts, which says that what has been contractually agreed upon may not be unilaterally withdrawn. Uh, so applied to uh, employment contracts, the employer cannot withdraw benefits, cannot withdraw salaries, compensation that are that were agreed upon at the inception of the employment contract. It cannot be, it cannot be changed unless there is consent or agreement of the employee. Otherwise, there there is a violation of mutuality of contracts. And uh, this is um, echoed and reiterated in Article 100 of the Labor Code. Okay. Now let's go to retrenchment. Retrenchment is an authorized cause of terminating an employee. So wag naman sana tayong dumating doon. So ito rin yung look out ng ating mga uh, kasama na school personnel. But of course, when it, uh, when it becomes absolutely necessary, and unavoidable, then uh, it will be resorted to by the schools. But it should be, it should not be abused. It should not be um, the school personnel should not uh, be taken advantage of uh, because of the situation that we're having now. All right. So retrenchment is uh, an authorized cost of uh, terminating an employee. 
as a matter of last resort, the nature of losses in a retrenchment should be substantial and not merely de minimis because remember retrenchment is um, necessary, meaning you have to lay off your employee in order to prevent substantial and imminent losses. All right. The losses should be substantial and not merely de minimis. The substantial loss apprehended must be reasonably imminent, as such imminence can be perceived objectively and in good faith by the employer. There should, in, or, in other words, be a certain degree of urgency for the retrenchment, which is, after all, a drastic recourse with serious consequences for the livelihood of the employees retired or otherwise laid off. Because of the consequential nature of retrenchment, it must thirdly be reasonably necessary and likely to effectively prevent the expected losses. If it will not uh, prevent the losses, then it should not be resorted to. If there are other means, if there are other uh, costs that are unnecessary, dapat yun ang mauna. Dapat Dapat na exhaust mo na lahat ng reasonable measures to prevent losses before you lay off, before you lay off employees. All right. The employer should have taken other measures prior or parallel to retrenchment to forestall losses. Like I said, cut other costs other than labor costs. Okay. The school should exercise with caution in proceeding with retrenchment. What about redundancy? And what is the difference? Yung parehong itong authorized causes, pareho silang authorized uh, cause to um, to terminate employment under the labor code. But uh, what is the difference? No? Retrenchment is to prevent losses. The main, uh, the main consideration there is the substantial and imminent losses. That's why you're laying off. Redundancy naman, you're also laying off but uh, losses or imminent losses is not uh, is not uh, required but uh, the, the re but the laying off is necessary because there is redundancy meaning there is a superfluity of um, of uh, positions or employees in other words you have more employees than work uh, there is duplication of function then you can uh, you can lay off uh, excess employees. All right. There is a redundancy where the services of an employee are in excess of what is reasonably demanded by the actual requirement of the enterprise. So this may be uh, this may be uh, uh, possible in the uh, in this post-COVID scenario where. Where you don't have enough uh, students enrolling, and you have to maintain your contingent of school pa uh, personnel, particularly teachers and faculty, then you may start reviewing the uh, staffing and uh, your available uh, faculty and teachers. You may have more than what you need, and probably you need to implement a redundancy program. Now, what do you do? Huh? So, what are the requirements for for a valid retrenchment redundancy? You have to you have to notify the Department of Labor and Employment 30 days from the effectivity of the retrenchment or redundancy. But um, the more important requirement is that you implement a fair and reasonable criteria in choosing who will be dismissed and who will stay in the school, such as. Uh, but not uh, this is not uh, uh, absolute. No? As long as the as long as the criteria that you will uh, employ is uh, is uh, is just and fair and reasonable. All right. But some examples are that you have considered are the status, efficiency, seniority, no? physical fitness, age. No? Imagine, but the physical fitness, age, and financial hardship. For certain workers, uh, pero it depends on your appreciation, and it also depends on the work to be done. No? For example, seniority probably in some work seniority uh, may be an advantage, so you retain the more senior ones. 
But if it involves uh, strenuous work, physical activity, probably the younger ones have the edge. But again, as long as the criteria that you uh, use in choosing who will, who will go and who will stay is reasonable, then uh, you're not violating the law and you are implementing a valid redundancy program. Bawa, mas marami ka ng uh, math teachers. No? Ang dami mong math teachers. Uh, lima. No? Limang math teachers. Eh, lima na lang din ang estudyante mo. Uh, what do you do? So, sabi mo, isa na lang. I will choose only one math teacher. No? So, pinatawag mo sila. Ito na. Ang mga math teachers. No? Then you choose. Uh, you come up with the criteria and choose who will stay. Uh, so, ito kaya sa scenario na ito, sinong pipiliin ninyo? Uh, five years in service, no license, pero new graduate. Uh, three years in service, li license. Oh, isa pala, no license. Ito, may license, pero 60 years old na. Mukha lang bata. No? Uh, ito namang 15 years in service, license with MA pa, no? and 35 years old. Uh, or somebody who's 15 years in service, uh, with license, with MA, kaya lang pasaway. No? Or uh, yung principal, no? math teacher din. Sino kaya ang pipiliin niyo dyan? No? Okay. Or uh, it's also possible that uh, there is already a labor saving uh, device or uh, labor uh, um, reducing uh, uh, equipment in the school. Oh, pwede din yan maging cost for redundancy. Hindi, hindi na kailangan yung uh, hindi na kailangan ng tao no, to do the work kasi meron ng AI, artificial intelligence. So it's possible. Kung lalo na ngayon, meron, kung meron tayong flexible learning options, yes, it may also be a cost for implementing redundancy program. So please take note. No, this is exercise with extreme caution and only as a matter of last resort. Hindi pwede itong first option is to lay off. Uh, this is an extreme measure only as a matter of last resort. So please take note of the requirements. The school should have exhausted steps to avoid termination. There should be a reasonable criteria in the selection on who goes and who stays and should be done, most especially, and more importantly, should be done in good faith. And there is, of course, proper notice to the proper authorities, to the employees, and to the Department of Labor and Employment. Okay. In retrenchment, proof of loss is um, uh, necessary. All right. Proof of losses or impending losses. Hindi makailangan may losses na kasi preventive. No? But uh, imminent and substantial. And of course, the notice says that you have... Uh, that you have to send and the ECQ. Malimutan, of course, yung separation pay. No, kailangan may separation pay kung, uh, kung retrenchment or redundancy. Ret ang pinagkaiba ang pinagka lang nila, yung retrenchment is half month salary per year of service or one month every is higher because the reason is economic losses. No, pag redundancy naman, again, the basis is not economic uh, reverses. So the separation pay that you need to pay the affected employee or employees should be equivalent to one month's salary of service per year of service or one month salary, whichever is higher. Okay, so um, uh, the burden falls. The burden falls upon the employer to prove that there is economic or business losses with sufficient supporting evidence if the company or if the school fails to prove these reverses or losses then the employee's dismissal uh, will not be justified no so there may be a case for illegal dismissal because the retrenchment or redundancy is uh, illegal or invalid but re retrenchment is a management prerogative a means to protect and preserve the employer's viability and ensure his survival. So it is part of the management prerogative. The only limitation, you know, management prerogative is recognized by our laws and even by our courts. The Supreme Court said that in the absence of abuse, 
this uh, management prerogative should not be um, subject to review and um, not even the courts can deprive the uh, the uh, employers their management prerogatives under the law so but the only limitation for for management prerogative is equity and substantial justice or humanitarian considerations. Those are the only limitations to management prerogatives. As long as, of course, what is being done is in accordance with law, then the exercise of management prerogative may not be reversed or may not be denied the uh, employer. Only in the interest of uh, equity and substantial justice. Okay, notice that the employees and to the dole is important. Okay, what are the reasons? Probably for what are the reasons? Possible reasons now? If we do a retrenchment uh, uh, program, probably the reason may be transition to flexible learning uh, options. You don't need as many teachers, as many school personnel. Yung uh, in charge of retreats, eh, wala nang retreat. So, anong gagawin natin? Pwedeng i-transfer, pwedeng i-reassign. Oh, pero last resort, eh, retrenchment. No? Or probably the losses are certain and inevitable. And uh, of course, uh, the notice should be within a reasonable period. All right, now, retrenchment, related to retrenchment, is also floating status. Uh, ito, probably this is uh, the first time you'll be hearing this. A floating status is a temporary retrenchment program, except that, um, uh, well, it is retrenchment, except that it is done in a shorter period of time. So, floating status for six months, not more than six months. You can put employees who do not have work, uh, but the, the stoppage or cessation of work may be viewed as something that's temporary, so you can put your employees on temporary retrenchment. And after the expiration of the six months, the employer should decide whether to uh, permanently retrench the employee or recall the employee to uh, active status. But during the uh, period of floating status, the employee will not receive any pay. So this is also another option for, for some. It may be applicable to some uh, employees or school personnel, even the academic personnel, especially when we're when our when we are looking at uh, the projected enrollment uh, this coming school year. Uh, probably you're looking at uh, just months before you can recover. Then probably you can keep your employees and put them temporarily in floating status. Some are saying hindi naman applicable yan sa employees ginagawa lang yan sa mga agency employees lalo na security guard no pero hindi po yun uh, accurate because the supreme court already recognized that this can be exercised by uh, by employers when the when the two requisites are satisfied when there is no work available all right and that um, when there is no work uh, available and that the the, the employer has uh, exhausted all the necessary means to avoid retrenchment. So, pwedeng ilagay sa floating status. Again, as long as uh, it does not exceed the six-month uh, period. There is no provision in the labor code, the exact provision in the labor code that uh, allows uh, floating status, but the closest is Article 301 or 301 of, uh, of the labor code as amended. It says that when employment not deemed terminated, okay, the bona fide suspension of the operation of a business or undertaking for a period not exceeding six months or the fulfillment by the employee of a military or civic duty shall not terminate employment. In, such, in all such cases, the employer shall reinstate the employee to his former position without loss of seniority rights if he indicates his desire to resume his work not later than one month from the resumption of operations of his employer or from his relief from the military or civic duty. So this is the closest 
to uh, a provision on the labor on in the labor code on floating status after six months eh, dapat pabalikin na siya you know the, the employee can only float for six months after six months eh, the employee will drown either either will drown or will be saved you know? so the employer should decide whether to uh, permanently retrench the employee or recall to active service pag na recall siya sa active service then dapat uh, no loss of seniority rights no change in the in the terms and conditions of employment kapag naman mag decide na siya na permanently retrench as we already said then the employee should be entitled to separation uh, pay benefits as provided by the law okay you know this is very difficult time for all of us i understand it's uh, very emotional um this is very close to uh to uh, the heart of uh, our school personnel but we all have to exhaust our uh, our uh, remedies and uh, and we have to find ways you know, for us to to address and protect the welfare of our teachers and faculty at the same time also uh, make sure that the school is viable make sure that uh, we are sustainable and that we can exist for our students and uh, for our uh, we could continue to operate to complement the uh, the education uh, function of the uh, of the uh, public school system and the state universities and colleges for higher education so uh, yan po ay uh, napakahirap gawin ngayon i cannot say that uh, that uh, i can do it if i'm in the position of an administrator now but uh, i would like also to appeal to our school administrators to school owners to extend compassion i know you are already extending compassion to them but uh, baka kaya pa konti pa no? but uh, as we wait for government intervention and support uh, especially economically no? to our schools and our school personnel O sana po ay uh, malagpasan natin ito lahat ng ating pinagdadaanan at uh, dasal ko rin po na sana uh, tayong lahat ay iwas sa uh, peligro at uh, sana po lagi tayong uh, healthy and safe. So this ends uh, my uh, presentation and my lecture this uh, this morning. If you have questions and uh, we're taking note of the questions and comments uh, made during the lecture, we'll try to answer that. In a while, um, ako po ay uh, magre-restroom break lang muna. So, I hope uh, you stay. Uh, uh, if you have some questions, at, uh, kung hindi naman, you can continue to keep in touch uh, through this page and through other channels. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, see a lot of you, uh, see you here, some familiar names and faces here. At yung mga ngayon lang po, uh, na, naka attend ng aking seminar eh, sana sa susunod uh, I can meet you in person also and uh, we continue to advocate for our for our education initiatives for our country and uh, most especially for our students sana po hindi na ma, ma delay further ang school opening sana makahanap na ng vaccine sana maayos na rin po lahat at uh, but uh, before that happens, I hope we can, of course, give our uh, support and uh, our cooperation to our authorities so that uh, this pandemic will be over very soon. Maraming salamat po ulit sa inyo lahat at uh, magandang uh, umaga sa inyo lahat. So um, I just uh, take a very brief uh, break, then uh, we'll come back to answer the questions. Maraming salamat po ulit. Thank you and good morning.
Okay. Hi. We're back na. Huh? We're back. Oh, mabilis lang para ano, uh, before we go in, uh, to break for lunch. Una-una uh, sa lahat, uh, we'd like to thank everyone who joined us uh, in the webinar, uh, especially to Rex Publishing uh, for co-sponsoring uh, this uh, webinar series that we had. Uh, and also Raxo City. So if you have some IT needs, mga ano po natin, mga schools natin, you can uh, contact Raxo City. And uh, of course, uh, thank you very much uh, sa Estrada Inakino Law. Uh, joining us also for our Q&A this morning is uh, Senior Partner Attorney Tiris Ray Ann Aquino. Uh, Pasalamat ako rin. Hi, Attorney Ann. Bumati ka muna sa kanila. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you also. I, I saw kanina habang na, nag-present uh, ako, I saw in the comments at mga reactions, uh, very familiar names. No? So I'd like to say hi, hindi ko na po isa-isahin yung ating mga, mga clients. Una-una yung mga clients ng EA Law, uh, friends and clients, uh, down to the, from administrators down to the educators and mga private school teachers. Uh, good morning sa inyong lahat. Salamat. And also fr friends from the public schools, marami din po dyan yung followers natin sa page. Uh, good morning din sa inyo lahat. Thank you for joining us. And also some, I think some also DepEd officials no, from the region and the national office were tuning in and from the Commission of Higher Education. Maganda umaga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, maraming maraming salamat. Uh, I also, yung kanina may mga comments. Arang, uh, uh, hindi naman siguro ako na-distract pero parang uh, gusto ko na mag-comment kanina. It's a, uh, they're appearing on my screen. Uh, pero sabi ko nga, sagutin na lang natin. Uh, during this uh, Q&A. So, kung may mga, unahin po namin sagutin yung mga kanina sa mga comments. Uh, but feel free to to post your questions anytime. So, we'll allot, um, siguro mga 15 to 20 minutes. At, ano, wala na akong boses. Wala na akong, ano, to, to yun na yung lalumuna ko. So, uh, so, we can answer. Tapos, kung hindi po natin ma-address ngayon, especially do sa mga clients po ng EA, uh, siguro we can sit down and uh, discuss further so we can give you legal advice but uh, yung sa mga iba naman po uh, I think we already gave uh, very sufficient uh, legal information for you to craft your own school policies and for you to make uh, informed decision but just in case you still uh, need assistance of a lawyer you can consult this with your own uh, or your respective counsels and uh, also with us anytime okay so attorney Ann, ano bang uh, mga nalista mo dyan? so our uh, first question, can employers put their employees in floating status in time of pandemic? I think this was discussed uh, during your uh, lecture. So first, of course, uh, yes, based on the lecture, uh, on a pwede naman. So if employees cannot be reassigned to some work, kasi wala naman talagang work, and if there's no actual work talaga, you can uh, put your employees uh, in floating status. So, But again, as mentioned by Attorney Estrada, the floating status should not exceed six months. So if wala pa rin, after six months, wala pa rin work, then that's the time you have to retrench your employees. Yes. O tama, maidagdag ko lang. Una-una, yung floating status, kasi madalas po yan naririnig natin, uh, ginagamit sa mga agency personnel, lalong-lalo na sa mga security guards. O, pero may mga jurisprudence na po, sinabi na Supreme Court, hindi lang po yan uh, limited sa mga agency personnel. Pero uh, again, gusto ko pong ulitin, uh, hindi po ito para gamitin to take advantage of the situation. Uh, yung pong paglalagay sa floating status uh, presupposes merong bona fide suspension of work. O, ibig sabihin, talagang wala nang, ano eh, wala nang available work at dapat yung cost ng... Uh, suspension ng work is not the school or not the employer. No? So I think naman sa sitwasyon ngayon, there's really a bona fide suspension of work. And uh, we have already, and, and the school should have exhausted all means necessary. And the only uh, thing uh, left, uh, the only option left is uh, to temporarily retrench or put on floating status certain employees. So kanina may mga tanong attorney Ann, kung pwede bang mm -hmm. the floating, retrenchment, pwede bang i-reduce yung salaries, etc. I-reassign. Tama po, pwede po yun. Basta anything short of uh, termination or retrenchment or floating status, pwede po yun. Basta ang mahalaga po, uh, there's good faith uh, at uh, again, merong exhaustion of all available options. At yung, temp yung floating status should not exceed six months. Pag natapos mm -hmm. yung six months, it's either 
makabalik na sila dahil meron ng uh, meron ng work available for them or they will be permanently retrenched. Kung sila po ay permanently retrenched, kailangan mag-comply ang school sa requirements ng retrenchment from mm-hmm. office. So lahat ng kailangan lalong-lalo na yung payment of separation pay. Mm-hmm. So I uh, mention ko lang kasi may nagtanong kung ma- how much do ba yung separation pay. So if you're retention your employee, so payment of separation pay is equivalent to one month pay or at least one half month pay for every year of service, whichever is higher. So yun ang separation pay natin. So uh, unless... Retrenchment. Uh, kung uh, retrenchment uh, half, kung uh, redundancy uh, one month. So. So unless wala naman siguro may permanent closure pero kasi pag nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, permanent closure so you retrench and the reason is that there's a permanent closure then that's the time na you pwede kang exempted under the law to pay separation pay. Pero we don't wish naman na magkaroon talaga ng mga permanent closure sa schools natin. Okay, so what else? Uh, so I guess an- another important thing when it comes to retrenchment is that we must be able to show yung substantial losses natin. So, or pwede ding impending losses. So hindi pwedeng diminimi lang or feeling natin there's a loss. So dapat mayroon at least substantial loss that uh, the school will in- incur. Oh, okay. Third yan, tatalon lang ako sa mga ano, balikan ko lang yung mga, may mga unang uh, questions, you know, during the first part of the discussion on school opening. That's so, mm-hmm. mag- ito. Yung uh, may nagtanong, can schools open uh, uh, with different schedules in different regions? Possible po yan dahil yung po, po ating quarantine, yung lockdown, iba-iba din po, ano, may ECQ, may GCQ. So that's also possible. Uh, pwede po yan. Uh, and I think the Commission on Higher Education, in so far as the higher education institutions, sinabi po ng, uh, ng ating chair, chair na rolling, I think nasa advisories na rin, rolling, uh, they, they will implement rolling uh, school opening. Ibig sabihin, depende on, depends on the, uh, it depends on the readiness of the HEIs, they can open uh, their, their uh, school uh, uh, calendar anytime no, for the uh, next uh, school year. Uh, tapos meron din nagtanong yung tuition increases pwede daw pwede pa rin ba sila magtaas itong sa dadating na school year uh, wala namang prohibition no at uh, ang tanong ay how do you justify i think it will be a very hard decision for the schools who uh, is thinking of uh, increasing their tuition pero wala naman pong prohibition no para sa ating at uh, gusto ko ding uh, i-highlight kasi under the law naman yung pong uh, makokolekta natin na increases yung 70% noon eh di ba talagang pupunta yan sa sa ating mga school personnel hindi lang sa teachers so i think yun ang decision point no kung magtataas ka i think it's really for the school personnel na para dahil because of the financial difficulties mm-hmm. so ano po yung mga how do you justify well you have to follow the rules no and regulations in uh, in the increasing tuition. Siyempre, yung consultation, mahalaga din yon with the students and with the parents before you uh, arrive at such decision. Pero kung sakaling uh, tingin po ninyo ay kailangan talaga, lalo na din sa mga school personnel natin dahil sila yung makikinabang unang-una dun sa tuition increase. But you have to balance that also with the ability of the students to pay dahil baka walang mag-enroll. Eh, lalo tayong, ano, lalong uh, hihirap ang sitwasyon natin. Oh, turn yan. Uh, in addition dun sa, kasi we're talking about tuition increase, paano naman daw yung, there's a question here, paano naman daw yung decrease in tuition? So, since wala naman daw mga extracurricular activities or yung mga utilities na binabayaran, can the parents demand for the decrease of tuition fee? Yung sa dadating na school year? Uh, I think that's the yung question also. For the oh. next school year. Yeah, pwede, pwede po yun. Uh, that's really possible. No? May mga items in the fees na maaring matanggal. Oo, pero uh, I think you have to look at it not per item. Eh, no? From the perspective of the, if you're running a school, if you're an administrator, you should not look, it, look at it based on the items on the fees, but you look at the total uh, institutional funds that you need. No? So ang ibig ko sabihin nun, some of the fees may no longer exist, yung mga items doon, pero it will be replaced by new items no na kailangan din ng school uh, dapat titingnan mo yung uh, magkano ba yung budget na kailangan ng school for the coming school year for other uh, essential uh, uh, equipment cost kasama na yung uh, for human resources training lahat po yan i-consider natin so 
maaring may mga wal, mawalang items doon but uh, yung yung total fees na pwedeng natin masingil uh, dapat yun nang tingnan din natin pero uh, at any rate yan ay ano institutional decisions it will be resolved based on the respective uh, school communities mm -hmm. Okay, so next, uh, this is a very interesting question. So what do we do with teachers who can't refuse, uh, who, who can't or refuse to move online even after training? So, okay, sige, ako na muna sagot. <laughs> okay. Who can't and refuse, oh, uh, So after you exhausted everything, like, for, and then, yun nga, may training na, you provided all the support, and then, but still, the teacher refuses to uh, abide by the new policy of the school, then I think you have a ground to dismiss that employee. We're talking about refusal na. So ayaw niya talaga matigas ulo niya. At yung siguro yung mga hindi millennials na mga teachers natin. No offense naman. May, may mga anyway, millennial kasi ako. So so in order for this to be a valid ground for uh, termination, so pwede siya kasi mag-fall sa willful disobedience or uh, na habitual neglect of duty. So when we talk about uh, willful disobedience, so number one, of course, there must be uh, insubordination or disobedience, and it must be the disobedience must be wrongful, intentional, and characterized by perverse attitude. So talagang ayaw niya talaga matigas sa ulo. And the order violated must be reasonable. And I think naman for the schools to adopt online learning or distant learning, so that's a reasonable regulation for the school. So when we talk about habitual neglect naman, it's also the uh, no, same naman. So there's a uh, duty and then the the teacher refuses to comply with that uh, order and it must be uh, habitual. So hindi pwedeng once lang. So kailangan ano, siya, recurring siya. So baka may ma-add ka ito ni Estrada. Uh, ngayon talaga masusubok ang ano, no, yung uh, skill set ng mga teachers natin. Uh, now migrating and uh, transitioning to the flexible learning systems, more tech, more use of technology, etc. So, uh, may dagdag ko doon, no? in, in, uh, not in a negative way, dito, um, positive, uh, based also on the law. Di ba, meron tayong code of ethics for professional teachers, uh, specifically sa kanila. And, and it's uh, part of our duty to update ourselves in the uh, new developments and trends in the delivery of education. So now is the time no, for us to uh, do that and prove that, that we, we can. No? So it's part of a duty, not really because uh, there are sanctions. But as I've said, kung merong, uh, or uh, as mentioned by Attorney Aquino, if there is refusal, no? refusal, ibig sabihin, eh, there's bad faith, there is just utter refusal, no? ayaw lang sumunod, oh, pa pwede po yan maging ground. No? Dahil um, ano, everyone's moving towards a new platform, depending on... Uh, ni refusal and uh, insisting on the old uh, way. Oh, so hindi pwede. Pero yung Kent, yun din ang ano, paano kung talagang uh, tinrain na, gusto naman, gustong gusto, kaya lang eh, hindi, rin, hindi matuto eh, ano ang risk sa kanila. Ang risk po doon, syempre, pag uh, nag-downsize yung school, eh, syempre, kung sino yung pipiliin na matitira, ay eh, baka nasa huli kayo sa listahan. O kaya dapat talaga, it is really challenging for, for all of us. Uh, hindi lang po sa schools, pati rin sa mga teachers. O, oh, Attorney Ann, meron pa ba tayong uh, mga uh, Eto, so, eto, another interesting question. How can we do this in public? So, so we're talking about uh, remote uh, learning. So, how can we do this in yun, in public school? Uh, alam nyo po, sa, sa totoo lang, ay, nagugulat ako. Ang, uh, magaling din yung uh, ating Department of Education. Kasi, actually, nauna na sila. Uh, Di ba, na nag-migrate sa, ano, sa um, online not necessarily requiring mobile data of the students. Merong, merong commons, yung DepEd commons, etc. So I think, uh, mag gagawin talaga, kasi there's no choice, no? Ma may mga flexible learning options talaga tayo gagawin. Not only in the private schools, but also in the public schools. At yung mga areas naman, I think kung kukulangin talaga ang resources ng ating government, then they'll have to, to exhaust other means, like ano, more, uh, more class days, baka pati Saturdays, and more shifts for the public school system to observe social distancing. It might also consider bigger um, venues, no? Baka gymnasium, uh, gano, so para observing social distancing. Then coupled with, no, and then supplemented by flexible learning options. Pero ano ito, eh, increment of uh, a week, uh, mga developments. Uh, we're saying with the, with the government support from, from Congress, from the economic team, I think kaya naman natin, even in the public school system, kung mabibigyan tayo ng support, lalo na yung interconnectivity and mga cellphone, gadget, ano, kaya po naman yan kung, uh, kung matutulungan po tayo ng gobyerno. 
lalong lalo sa lalo na lalo na sa public school system. Mm-hmm. So just to add that, no, under our constitution, kasi it's it's it is the obligation of the state to to ensure that education is accessible to all. So I think with this new normal, talagang uh, compelled ang government agencies natin, especially the DepEd, to find ways in order to ensure that uh, education is accessible even to those uh, uh, our students na nasa malayong area na they don't have access to internet. So yeah. Okay, so what else? Paano kung yung ang uh, mag-refuse ay yung uh, mga estudyante ayaw mag-migrate sa, sa bagong platforms ng school? Uh, paano daw kung sila naman may ayaw? <laughs> well, they have to adapt with this ano, new normal. Nga. I mean, they cannot dictate the, what's the prescribed format for the education since uh, I think the important thing right now is for the parents, students, and the school to work in for this to be uh to work in order for this uh, new setup to work for their uh, own development i think ang um, isang ano doon uh, kaya merong self ano eh merong self regulation yung mga schools they also have to make sure that this is acceptable to their school community including the students kasi may power din of choice yung mga magulang at students kung hindi nila gusto maari silang lumipat no so it has to work uh, pareho dapat sila na ano na sila ay uh, to work on its adaptability and acceptability pero of course andun pa rin ang choice ultimately sa parents sa, sa students kung nila gusto maari silang lumipat at pumili ng mga schools where they feel better yung uh, delivery at mas uh, fitted sa needs nila oh. mm-hmm. Okay. Meron lang ako ano, attorney, ah, hindi question kanina, pa, comment pa ulit-ulit yung about sa academic freedom. I think I mentioned in the in the, the um, earlier part of the lecture yung academic freedom at saka yung reasonable regulation in relation to choosing the modes of delivery. Kasi may mga, I think, may comment doon na yung academic freedom is only for institutions of higher learning. No? Under the constitution, tama po yun, no? higher the um, institutions of higher learning enjoy academic freedom, sabi ng constitution. But it is in the same provision of the constitution which recognizes reasonable regulation of all educational institutions. So yung sa discussion po natin ngayon, ang relevant po doon, yung administrative side of yung academic, uh, yung academic management of the schools. Yun po, wala pong uh, distinction doon. Yung uh, administrative... Uh, prerogatives at discretion ng educational institutions. Hindi lang po yan sa higher ed. O, yun po kasing uh, nasa constitution about academic freedom. Specific po yun dun sa academic freedom in pursuing the truth, in acquiring new knowledges. Ibig sabihin, hindi daw dapat tayo natitigil doon. No? Dapat eh, merong academic freedom yung faculty at yung institution to pursue and discover new knowledges. Pero sinabi ng Supreme Court in a long line of cases, hindi lang yun dapat ang aspect na tinitingnan, kundi yung administrative side. Doon na nga dinefine yung uh, freedom subsumed, yung uh, uh, how it shall be taught, what shall be taught, who shall be admitted to study, etc. So yun po ang sinasabi natin. Walang dis- wala pong distinction yun. Even the basic education schools have their uh, right to promulgate their own uh, reasonable rules in their own schools, including the uh, modes of delivery, including the curriculum, of course, within the prescribed guidelines of the Department of Education. So I hope that's uh, clear, ha? Oh, kasi hindi naman ibig sabihin, eh, wala na tayong, uh, kung basic education ka lang, wala kang, uh, wala kang uh, authority to decide uh, on what means to use uh, in the delivery of education. Pareho lang po yan in terms, in that respect, pareho lang po tayo sa ating mga kasama sa colleges and universities. Turn yan. So, uh, ito, kasi paulit-ulit ang question na to. Uh, uh, can we prevent students? I don't know if it's related uh, with, ano, uh, parang hindi siya, hindi siya related, pero paulit-ulit kasi. So, can we prevent students to enroll if uh, that student has a sibling who has an unpaid juice with the school? <laughs> parang hindi to related sa discussion uh, natin. Oh, pero, diba? oh. Ay, you know, favorite topic mo din yan, Atty. Nera. <laughs> Eh, de, de, kasi parang ano, no? ang sabi kasi natin, you, you cannot refuse uh, a student uh, to re-enroll no? in the same school uh, uh, if, if, the, if the student has no uh, delinquency in, ano, in, the, in the grades. No? For example, nakakapag-comply sa mga uh, academic requirements and also 
kung wala siyang uh, violation of school rules and policies, eh, kasama doon kung meron kang violation, especially on the, kasama na doon yung payment of fees, di ba? Pero kasi it attaches to the student. May, yung academic freedom, meron po kasing academic freedom of students. Yung, yung the right to enroll until graduation. Yun po ay individually attached to students. So kung yung kapatid eh, hindi nakakabayad, eh di naman pwedeng uh, pareho magkapatid, eh, hindi pa stop mo. So uh, hindi naman po po pwedeng gawin. But I, 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 I uh, acknowledge yung and I recognize the problem. May mga ganyan po talagang schools. Kasi same parents ang uh, ano yan, di ba? ang uh, mayroong responsibility or obligation. Ito na nga yung sinasabi rin ng DepEd na dapat hindi dapat hindi mag-suffer yung mga estudyante dun sa default or uh, negligence of their parents. So, siguro let's just extend some more ano, understanding. Sa no? no? mm-hmm. so, nagtatanong, email na lang nyo ako ulit. <laughs> so, ito, another interesting uh, question is, how about the cut of age? Since daw mag-move yung opening ng school cal- calendar, how will this be implemented, yung uh, cut-off age? Uh, so, oh, okay. Very controversial ano, question. Well, well kami, uh, sige. Si Aunga, so in our law office, of course, uh, at the outset, we do not subscribe talaga with the policy of DepEd in prescribing cut-off age because uh, we believe that it is the parent who is the best judge in determining the competency of their uh, children. So, kasi it's based, I forgot the specific memo na, but uh, itong cut of age is that, I think it's based on a foreign research. So, that's the only basis they cited. So, I'm not sure what else, I mean, what's the basis for them in prescribing this cut of age. So, if they can't show any compelling interest to protect the students on why they would have to put certain cut of age. So, we we are saying sa law office namin na it's this is something that is unconstitutional kasi to begin with it is the the parents they have the right to to rear their children so they have the option on whether to enroll their children uh, in private school or public school or ano kung kung yung anak ba nila is competent enough to uh, join the school so yun yung ano namin yun yung stand namin pero yung question i think at attorney Estrada will answer the question going back to the question Kung maka-apektuhan ba daw yung ano? Yung... It, um, not, not to preempt the Department of Education, but I think it will follow no the, the rule that they have uh, placed, put in place before, na uh, yung depending on the school opening, the entrant age based on the birth date, yung birth month ng bata will also be adjusted. Uh, pero ito nga yung sinasabi, ever since kami, kasi in terms of birth month, yung, birth, yung cut of age, we, uh, we uh, agree, no? And we should follow that kasi by law yan, eh, no? yung, yung kindergarten act, dapat five years old. Um, I think yung pinagtatalunan or yung issue talaga is on the month kung kailan nag-five year old yung bata. O, mm-hmm. Sabi ng DepEd, pwedeng beyond um, August, kung, septem- kung September 1 nag-five year old yung bata, po pwede kung, kung uh, ang school opening niya is also August. no? I think August no? and subsequent months. So kami kasi, we believe that it should not depend on the school opening. No, dapat ang basihan ng entrant age in terms of month is the aptitude, the competency ng bata. No, kung after measuring their uh, aptitude and the readiness, eh, pwede na sila, the birth date should not be relevant. No, as long as uh, within the age po sila ng 5 years old. So uh, hintayin po natin kung ano yung uh, guidelines po ng DEPA dyan. I think it should affect. No, dapat more inclusive. Kasi madidelay yung school opening, I, should, they, I, I think they should accept more students who are uh, turning five, no? Doon sa later than August uh, of the year. Okay, may tanong lang si, ano, oh, sakto, si, I think si Pastor Eric ito, client natin <laughs> from School of Tomorrow. Merong uh, tanong si Pastor Eric about uh, those who are performing essential uh, activities and tasks sa works, workplace exemption sila sa general rule that the school person are, are not allowed to work during the ECQ. Ang ano po rin, kasi di ba po yung latest na resolution, I think resolution number 29 po yata yan, ang IATF, yung sa skeletal workforce, only those uh, areas where there is uh, under GCQ, pwede sila mag, uh, mag uh, deploy ng skeletal personal for purposes of closing the school calendar, etc. O, ang, ang yung pong uh, pinanggagalingan ko na in general, uh, kung uh, yung ating pong mga employees are performing 
uh, essential tasks, albawa yung nasa payroll, yung nag-aasikaso ng mga subsidies, government subsidies for students and uh, faculty. Pwede po sila intermittent. Ang basihan ko po dyan, yung nauna na pong uh, advisory, na, uh, advisory din ng uh, Commission on Higher Education, uh, I think advisory number 6 din ng CHED, even before the IATF resolution. Sinabi din po doon yung mga essential, uh, yung personal per performing essential tasks. I think uh, consistent pa rin naman tayo. Hindi naman sila pinagbabawal. I think yung context kasi nung uh, new IATF resolution is yung parang going back into operations na talaga. No? Uh, yung pong sinasabi ko naman, hindi naman, hindi pa tayo magbubukas. No? Pero maaring merong isa, dalawa, or a few of our personnel performing essential tasks. Talagang hindi pwede. Anbawa, kung hindi mo papapasukin yung, yung accounting staff at hindi pwedeng gawin fully online yung payroll, pa paano sa sahod yung mga empleyado? O mm -hmm. yung asikaso ng application for subsidy ng mga personnel, subsidy ESS, TSS, eh matitenga po yun. At sila naman na importante. Ang lagi ko sinasabi, dapat justified. At least gawa natin ng, uh, ng authorization from the schools para mapakita sa kung meron mang checkpoints. Or, uh, and I hope, I, I think it's consistent. Ganon din po sa DepEd in, in many discussions uh, I've heard also recognize that yung skeletal workforce, pagka uh, na-lift na po yung ECQ, pwede na pong payagan din. At least yung skeletal workforce in our schools in preparation for the next school year. So, okay. okay. Oh. So, it, um, my question pa dito eh. So, ito I think kay Ms., uh, from Ms. Beth, can we ask the LGU to use special education fund to aid our financial losses? Okay, under the law kasi yung SEF, yung Special Education Fund, ito po ay kinukuha, this is sourced from the real estate uh, property taxes na binabayad sa local government. Um, yan po, yung budget po na nanilikom dyan, ginagamit yon para sa needs ng lo local, local, ng local school boards, yung mga, ano, yung mga local colleges, universities, local schools, yung iba in partnership with DepEd. Pero, Kung, uh, siguro kung may mga local government units sa sobra-sobra naman yung kanilang budget, SEF, hindi naman nila magamit lahat. Pwede naman po, possible din po yun na uh, magamit uh, to support school personnel in the schools in the area. Uh, iri -re align lang nila. Palagay ko kailangan ng, uh, or, uh, ng, kailangan ng resolution from the Sanggunian. Para pong ano to, parang similar to what Congress is doing now based on the Bayanihan to heal as one. Active ba, nagre -re align sila ng funds. So I think if it's done in the national uh, uh, stage or scale, maaari din pong gawin yan in the lo locality. Basta po may, meron pong uh, ordinance at resolution ng sanggunian. At, mm -hmm. at ito, ang mahalaga, kung meron pong uh, magagamit na pondo. Oo. Okay. So, ito, may isa pang question dito. Can private school teachers who will adopt online classes ask for allowance to cover electricity consumption and internet usage? Yan. Uh, pwede naman nasa pag-uusap po ng ano, nasa pag-uusap. Kasi halimbawa, in uh, meron kang additional cost, ano uh, gagamit ka ng uh, internet, etc., Wi-Fi, may cost sa Pero meron ka namang uh, mamemenos din, di ba? Kasi hindi hmm. ka na mamamasahe, you have more time. I think uh, depende sa negotiation ninyo or sa hmm. pag-uusap ninyo ng uh, ng school. Pero I think ano yan eh, may mo offset. Uh, so I think you have just have to meet uh, halfway. Marami ka rin namang costs na ano eh, mawawala na or ano. Uh, so in relation to uh, in relation to this question, pwede daw bang uh, ma-discipline yung employee or uh, ma-put ma uh, ma put into a floating status kung wala siyang internet connection or internet access. So I don't think, I mean, before you discipline an employee, dapat you provide all the support and the training. So kung wala siya, I mean, hindi naman siya pwedeng ma-punish ma ma because wala siya internet access. So mm -hmm. hindi siya, again, hindi siya pwedeng maging habitual delinquent just because hindi mm -hmm. siya, I mean, sorry, habitual, uh, neglect of duty just because wala siyang, ano, wala siyang internet access. Oh, at saka yung floating status, sabi nga natin, kung, Eh, no work ng internet. Oh, no work available. So, maaari siguro, eh, kung talagang hindi siya pwede doon sa that requires interconnectivity, but maaari siyang i-reassign. Uh, I'm sure merong ibang work na nagigitay sa kanya na hindi nagre-require ng interconnectivity. Kaya lang, maaaring hindi yon the same uh, compensation as uh, compared to being the fa faculty under uh, under the flexible learning uh, uh, flexible learning modes or teaching modes. 
O, pasa ito, ito, meron pang available, exhaust muna ninyo. Hindi pwedeng float ng float. <laughs> ito, maganda yung sinabi ito. Uh, question, can we implement job rotation so that we can prevent retrenchment? Yes, uh oo. -oh. This would mean salary adjustment, right? Yes, uh oo. -oh. Tama po. Basta ang mahalaga po, ang isipin po natin, syempre, dapat fair. Oo, oh, dapat fair. Uh, and we can show na this is necessary oh, pag nag-rotate. Kasi, ano yun, hindi, hindi, ka, hindi ka pwedeng basta-basta magbawas ng uh, salary. Sabi nga natin, diminution yan. Oh, violation of Article 100. So, dapat meron kang school-wide review. Oh, in terms of costs, in terms of staffing, And uh, after that, meron kang mga, mga remedies available for you. So, rotation, reassignment, oh, hanggang sa more extreme. Na maaring hindi, sa, hindi mo ngayon gagawin yan, baka mag-improve yung, yung uh, standing, economic standing ng school. Maaring hindi ka na mag-implement ng retrenchment or floating staff. Okay, so are we ano, down to our last question? Pero, uh, siguro last na, yung mga iba. Uh, 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 Oo. Oh, oh. Ito, I think concern ito na marami din. What will happen, what will be the impact of blending learn, blended learning to student discipline? Blended learning to student discipline. Ang effect nun, they'll, they'll have more time, uh, if sa minor students, lalong lalo na, they'll have, uh, they'll be spending more time in their, in the authority of their parents, no? in their biological parents. Uh, mas less, uh, less, Uh, reach and authority, authority of the school administrators in checking their discipline and making sure they comply with the uh, norms of conduct exacted by the school. I think yun ang isang effect. So, anong kailangan adjustments? Kasi may mga tanong din, ano ba, kailangan ba palitan yung school discipline policy? In general, ang sinasabi natin, dapat hindi, no? Same mm -hmm. man pa rin, say, kung strict yung school on certain values and uh, discipline standards, pareho pa rin. Pero what is important now, is that you coordinate well with the parents and uh, those who are exercising parental authority over the children. Kasi maaring uh, hindi na natin sila mamomonitor no? pag sila ay kasama na yung magulang. So dapat may constant uh, uh, monitoring and discussion also with their parents. At dapat then ipatupad yung school discipline policy kahit nasa bahay ng yung bata. No? Okay. I think to add that it's very important talaga to partner with parents, especially kasi ngayon, you cannot really monitor yung student discipline via online or remote learning. So you have to make sure that the parents will also report like for kung may mga violation. So ano to eh, uh, honesty is the best policy talaga dito. So dapat partners talaga yung parents when it comes to imposing discipline. Oh, tsaka pinos natin kanina, di ba, yung duty of the parents, section 14 of BP 232, di ba, sabi natin, ah, they should coordinate and cooperate with the school in implementing uh, school policies, particularly on discipline. O sige, huli na. Teka, may na naalala ko kanina, paulit-ulit yung ano, no? may mga ibang nagagalit, huwag, huwag na po kayo nagagalit about uh, yung sa license sa mga teachers. Uh, ito lang po sabi ko, hindi, it's not a crime, ha, kasi yung pong uh, pagtuturo, na yung, yung, uh, Based on jurisprudence and based on practice, yung, uh, and even jurisprudence, uh, ni-recognize the Supreme Court, yung hindi nakapag-comply doon sa license, which is an academic requirement for employment, they are probationary employees. And they are part-time. They are ineligible for full-time work. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, sinabi doon that they're criminals. No? And also, that's based on the law, the same law being cited. No? Uh, pangalawa, Under RA 10533, yung mga graduate of science, math, physics, etc., they can teach in basic education even without a license, di ba? Nakalagay dun sa RA 10533. Of course, based on certain conditions, uh, yan ay subject ng uh, another webinar. Pero uh, I think it's naman unfair to say na yung mga wala pang lisensya sa ngayon, baka may mga na nakikinig dito, ay sila ay probi sa mga private schools kasi kinukompleto pa nila yung lisensya or yung iba nakaplano pa. Uh, wala pa silang lisensya. Hindi naman po ibig sabihin eh, kayo ay makukulong no? dahil you are practice. No, at most you are uh, you or at worst you are uh, probi employees and uh, you are part-timers. You are not eligible for security of tenure. Okay, so uh, siguro marami pa <laughs> pero hopefully meron pa tayo mga ibang uh, sessions. I'm sure ngayon, gusto ko lang, Attorney Ann, uh, you know, I'm sure meron ka rin uh, announcement. Ano? Ako na mauna. Sa Wednesday po, meron, I think sa May 6, meron po yung Ashby uh, sponsored na webinar din. 
And this is uh, strictly on labor issues. Yun po ay, uh, meron, po, meron pong fee, may minimal fee po yun. Ang discussion po doon is more ano, specific. So kung meron, ihanda nyo na po yung, uh, kung meron kayong tanong, uh, ano ba, based is uh, pinag-usapan natin yan. Pero very specific na kung pwede nyo i-share doon para masagot na rin po natin kaagad. Uh, so I think limited din yung participants doon. Pero I think the discussions will be very specific to your issues and concerns. Uh, ito po kasi, uh, hirap, uh, na, na, uh, very varied yung ating uh, concern. So, yun po ay sa Wednesday, sa Ashby, dito rin po sa Facebook page na ito. Uh, thank you very much, Attorney Ann. Okay, so, invite ko din kayo. It's, uh, on, Mar on May 7, so I'll be having a lecture, a bar lecture on data privacy. So, kung interested kayo to know about the basics of data privacy, you can also join us. So, it's uh, sponsored by Rex Bookstore. So, May 7, so time to be announced pa. Uh, yung ba bar lecture, Attorney Ann, ibig sabihin niya yung mga yung mga nagre-review for the bar exam ba yan at mga lawyers based, na uh, the, the lecture is based on the syllabus provided by the Supreme Court. Pero we will cover, ano, I think, the important concepts that the our school administrators can apply in their school. Mm. So pwede rin umaten kahit uh, yes. hindi a lawyer. Okay, it's all, all, all mm. open to everyone. Okay, so I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, bilis ng oras pagka uh, online, ano? so three hours na pala tayo. Mm. Three hours na ako nang sasalita. So, <laughs> Maraming salamat po ulit. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again sa Rex Bookstore, sa Raxo City, at sa inyo pong lahat, mga educators. At uh, patuloy po tayong uh, mag-advocate and push for uh, support for our school personnel in the private schools. Kasama, pag sinahe po nating uh, school personnel, kasama po din doon ang mga non-teaching staff. Pag po kayong, uh, pag niyo pong isipin na yung mga hindi faculty pero employed ng schools, eh, hindi po sila sa kasama. Kasama po sila sa mga pinupush po natin na matutulungan po. Ano? So again, thank you very much. Thank you. Ay, salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Salamat. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.